going on everybody good old jm here with you on this throwback thursday as we present yet another out of the archives right here on the custody and studios jj i know has been working tirelessly to comb through everything on the no dq channel on the jeff meacham network on his own custody and studios on the jay hebert 95 studios the simple man brand to present to you something that you may not have seen before something that you haven't seen in a long time perhaps i know i'm looking forward to what the renegade has in store and i hope you are too Kick your feet up, enjoy a little respite from the craziness of a Thursday, and enjoy this classic content right here on the Casa Dean Studios. Now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. Gary Hebert, the man, the myth, the legend. I was amazed and I was looking to become a better skater myself and I wanted to be like Gary. When you look at a guy like this, he's one of the most talented people in his profession. He, he, he's been given gifts by God. It can get frustrating at times when you're trying things that, you know, that maybe don't come as quickly to you as other things. And, you know, you never really felt that sense of frustration with Gary. It was always about improvement and positive reinforcement. Was it really the end? Was that head injury really the end? God has called Gary to continue to be a blessing to others and to be a passionate example. My name is Gary Hebert. And this is the World Academy of Hockey, otherwise known as the Inside Edge. I would recommend anybody that have a chance to go come to his hockey school. I think it'd be well worth it. It'd be rewarding to uh, all the kids and anyone coaches, from whether it's an adult, a professional player, to a little kid like a mite or a squirt. Gary, from day one, has been instrumental in my hockey career. I started out as a potential Division Three player. And Gary brought me single-handedly through high school and into a top Division One prospect. I owe it all to Gary, the biggest legend on and off ice there's ever been. Listen, watch, learn, be confident, and have faith. Those are the answers I was brought to. Yet, I only now am really learning how truly important those five things are. Through preparation, through appropriate thoughtfulness and thinking, we can learn to untie the typical knots between our ears that drive us into underachievement and underperformance. And lo and behold, we can learn, I think, to fulfill our God given potential. Gary has the innate ability to make people not only better players, but better people. The life lessons they learn from Gary are incredible. You can always remember leaving that rink knowing as a player I got better or I had something to improve on to get better. And I think that's what you excelled on as a coach is giving us the knowledge to know what we needed to do to get better. There's coaches who know the game, but, but can you communicate and create passion in your kids and in your players? And, and Gary's able to do that. Gary's got uh, great knowledge and the great hands, but more importantly, his ability to connect with people and care for them. His, uh, Communication skills to me really stand out and separate him, and that's why he's one of the best, you know, in the world. Gary's a legend. You know, he's a special, special man.
Well, that was annoying. All right. Hey, Fish, go ahead, Fish. You're fought uh, when he comes back in here. And then uh, we'll go uh, from there. It looks like now it's working fine. Okay, okay, fine. My, my internet on the my other check, side. Check, one one check. couplet. One, one couplet, one, one shit thing after another. Friggin' bullshit. The age of the AI is coming, though. Yeah, we all know it's coming. Before you know it, wrestling will be in uh, AI. You do realize Vince will probably find a way to keep his subconscious alive in AI. He's gonna put his yeah. head put on put a his jar. Conscious, uh, put his conscious <laughs> it, inside a person like Cyberpunk 2077. No, he's gonna yeah. put his head, head on a jar and then, then there's like a cable linked to his subconsciousness. <laughs> God help us. Why are we talking so, about this? So why, here, here's why, what I was why saying. Why are we did, doing this? Seriously. So, so, so ahead, did you all hear about the Hardy Boys' is, um ranting on podcast oh yeah that one yeah we're talking about creative differences gee where well, i've heard that before but besides yeah, that well, maybe... uh, guess what um guess what came out today that should have told everyone yeah jeff can you please shut up what jeff hardy after he had eye surgery is still dealing with double vision yeah well and there you go jeff hardy is complaining that he is not being booked in bigger stuff Delusions of a madman. Also, CM Punk's back in the uh, WWE in case people have been living under a rock. We also, of course, saw the damnedest, most violent match I've ever seen in AEW history. We saw a greater story than Cody Rhodes, who failed to finish his at WrestleMania. I said what I said. At Full Gear Main Event. We are now on the verge of the year's end as we approach World's End. And now we have AEW with the first ever round robin in the tournament. Hell, and Kota Bush is going to wrestle a pro wrestling no against Vera Fuji. On January 2nd. What the fuck? And we are here Monday night because I'm tired. I'm sick of shit. But I'm still here. But why am I here? Because once again, I am the madman behind this crazy group where we always discuss all things wrestling. Let's freaking get into this. Hello again, everybody. Whoever tunes into this, whether it's live or on demand. But I'm doing this on demand this time because of one particular individual. But you know what this is, unless you haven't. Let me introduce you, for I am the simple man of the simple brand, the voice of the jam men, and probably one of the brainchilds of ATW. For being perfectly honest here, and my name is Noel Foster with the Inquirer, with the Enforcer, and with the man that always likes to rock like Prince Nana. Always be in the money. We'll be in the money 2025, like Rockstar will be allegedly. Only time will tell. Well, gentlemen, it's been a moment. We find made it to the last month of the year. And yes, I am sh I am sick right now, in case you all are wondering, both mentally and physically. But damn my illness. Uh, good to see you all once again. Lex, this was definitely your idea. Curse you. Uh, worse than Dan Housen. On a Monday night, waiting for making us wait to do this after a three-hour nonsense. But if nothing else, I guess you gave me two and a half hours of sleep. By the First way, off, uh, there's been an update on WWE Raw. Well, why don't we just go ahead and get right into it then? Fuck it. Go ahead, big choir of all things news, Eric. What you got on your head? Well, so WWE decided to pull a fine bros tactic. Uh, hmm. Explain. Explain. WWE came out and was like, attention, everyone. We are copyrighting the word yeet. Oh, Jesus. You know, that doesn't surprise me because if they did and do it. And then WWE right got reported, it. got told, yeah, you can't copyright that. And WWE's response to this was, Okay, Jay, looks like you got to get rid of all the Yeet stuff. We're throwing away the merchandise, the catchphrase. We're not letting you say it on TV. We're going to distance it from it. We can't We can't copyright it. Therefore, it's useless to us. I mean, free free range expression in WWE goes about as far as the script writer is willing to let you. And again, CM Punk is there. So CM Punk's already on a short lease, I'm sure. Man, th when they said they copyrighted Yeet, man, I'm pissed because I will never get to hear the they one tried, in the Rumble. They tried, they can't. No, no, the, the rumble where if Jay eliminates someone, everyone in the crowd will scream yeet. But Jay has to be like, I can't say it. Doesn't mean the people won't doesn't mean the people won't say it. Then again, WWE is very heavily filtered uh, as it is. But good to see you, Eric. Uh King, bit a moment. Good to see you as always in your house. And yes, we'll definitely certainly talk about 2025, at least one thing we know about that. But how are you Perfect. feeling tonight, man? 
I'm feeling good, as you can tell, the shades. This is just of disappointment, as y'all see the headline. So I'm keeping that one for a good while. Let's be honest here. Are we really surprised the track we're going to rock star? And, and, and let's be fair. How many times was Grandpa Bob 5 delayed? And by the time that she came out, it still delivered. Okay, so I already knew they were not going to bring yeah, out but, Grand Theft Auto next year. I had, I, had no, I had no expectations of Grand Theft Auto coming out next year. But you know what? It's in Vice City. It's the city of neon, party, bikini. And I can it's punch Ron DeSantis. So, yes, and you might fulfill your uh, long way of fantasy. So you know what? Wake up like Evanescence King and build your spirit up and dance like Prince Nana if you want, if we reach that point, because Nana's still a thing at AEW, among so many others. So good to see you. Lex, you caused this uh, Monday night shenanigan to happen. So as always, man, good to see you. I know you've been busy. You've been uh, also, of course, uh, hanging out with the um, former Cruiserweight Classic participants. You also got a unique uh, archive with uh, PWI uh, edition. And you've been involved in watching women's wrestling in the Philippines, your home country. How you been, yep. man? What you been up to? Yeah, I've been busy a lot with work and stuff. I had to catch up with wrestling in the Philippines because, of course, it's the last show of the year. And I had to. And, yeah, this is the only um, time until the last of ATWV of 2023 I'm going to be making another till after that i'm gonna be busy again in japan right are you going to wrestle kingdom finally yes there you go we got well again you got wrestle kingdom you got pro wrestling no on the week before that you got dream kingdom on one but now i get to bring this up since we're talking about japan a little bit go for it at the end of january sports illustrated confirmed okada will probably is considering other options if it when his contract expires you guys imagine the Rainmaker in WWE? What would they do with that gimmick? Well, let's but, see. Here's the thing. They're going to change this name, probably. Yeah, but here's the thing. WWE apparently is only pushing Nakamura because they were like, look, Okada, we are definitely not going to turn you into a stereotype. Right. But except the fact that Okada's main priority is to stay with his family in Japan, and I have a feeling if he does enter free agency, there's only two options here. Either one, he gets that Osprey deal of what Osprey got in full gear, or two, he resigns in New Japan. Those are the only two options. Back to TNA. He mm. will never touch no. that company again. Nah, he had he had PTSD in TNA. Yep. Can you blame him with what he was given as you talked about the gimmick? But but yeah, I mean the aspects of Okada going to something else is also bizarre in its own right. But it's not the first time he talked about maybe it's time for me to explore other avenues. Why you think right now he's a six man? Never a champion with the greatest summit of those three that we've ever seen hold those belts with Tomori Ishii and the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Even the ace isn't involved in the main event, but the ace is actually going for a singles championship. Yes. But this is what I said. I said this. There's going to be an influx of Sun Okada fans from tribalists of many companies. My take, oh, much my like goodness. J.Y., Okada could benefit from a change of scenery. I mean, once he was handpicked to carry the Olympic torch, he was pretty much peaked all he could in New Japan as a mega star. Well, according to Dave Meltzer, so take that for what you will, a lot yes. of New Japan pro wrestling uh, wrestlers are going to be on expiring contracts in 2024. So take that for what you will. Yeah, so, uh, so, 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 so um, going bad. one from stardom as well. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, again, a lot of contracts in general are expiring next year, guys. Like I said, next year is going to change the sh- and shape the industry uh, as we know it. I mean, you got WWE looking at Julia. You got AEW looking at Julia. You got Kasutsuko Okada right now under the button. And hey, all Japan Pro Wrestling got back Kazuhiko Nakajima, who won the Triple Crown. So it's one of those things where we really don't know anything concrete about any company except for one thing. Will Ospreay will be all elite for the longer term. Yes. Which good for him. But at the end of the day, look, we don't dictate the people's choice in what they choose to do in this career that they live by, what we idolize our fan of man, that is professional wrestling. If you support a talent, whether they go to the world of sports entertainment, God help them, or whether they go to the heavily politically inaccurate atmosphere that is AEW, let's just be honest here, or they go back now to what was TNA as Impact Wrestling reached its final resolution here, those are your big three. Unless you stay across in your territory looking at Japan, 
Stardom, there's not bigger women's promotions than Stardom unless to do like maybe Sendai Girls or Go Violence with Prominence. And as far as New Japan Pro Wrestling goes, they lead the front. Why you got Pro Wrestling, no one all Japan Pro Wrestling, prior your secondaries. At the end of the day, a competitor in this industry is going to do one thing best for them. And that is what gives them the best money to support their family. And as long as you can provide them that, who are we to argue? Because we sure as hell don't have the wallet. Even though we spent four hundred dollars this year on AEW pay per views, that's a different conversation. Yeah. Oh, by the way, World's End. Tony Khan finally came out and told everyone, "We well, all know where I got my name from." World's End. Avenger. Ucho. He got it from a London bar, so it clearly involves alcoholism. A London bar. So basically, when he went, when they, when we went all Kong. in. So when basically when we went all in earlier this year, that's where he got the name. Got it. Apparently, it was during the full hem stuff. Okay. Yeah, when I heard that, I was like, oh, God. Imagine. I'm like, I know it's not going to happen, but imagine if they just got Stone Cold just to bring in the being in the beer. Oh, what? I mean, they got the woo energy drinks, uh, to be fair. And one thing that we just learned. No cares about Ric Flair right now, especially after his little uh, moment on Rampage. I feel like Ric Flair. Which I'm glad it got edited out, by the way. Yeah. He can still well, go yeah. suck a blue chew. Look, at the end of the day, let's leave Ric Flair alone, and let's just focus on the fact that Sting's retiring next year of Revolution. We got our date. We got our venue. We got our reason. But the only thing we're missing at this point is the match. All right? So Sting, Sting debuted. It ended where it all began. Revolution. Yeah. 2000. And, uh, well, no, well, not necessarily. Remember, that was Christian Cage. And, of course, uh, Sting came in during Winter is Coming. That year in the year, yeah, but his first match technically was Revolution. That, uh, that's fair. So, you know what? I, I mean, it I can, ended I where it all began. At, he wrestled at Revolution, he will end his career at Revolution. Fair enough. All right, now that we spitball, let's actually get into this thing, shall we? Let's go ahead and start with the reason the man's got the shades, and then we can try and lift his spirit. Anthony, go ahead and lead it. As we now know, Rockstar Gans has finally given us our first trailer. Surprise, motherfuckers. It was before freaking Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. standard time. Yeah, and they got it, hacked and leaked. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, you're fucked. There's nothing is private in this world anymore <laughs> as long as you have the internet at your disposal. So we got Rockstar Games giving us Grand Theft Auto 6, and now we know the day is 2025. We know the following right now. It will take place in Vice City, and there is a female protagonist, a Latina. So let's go ahead and start with you, King, since this is the primary reason you got the shades and that maybe we can lift your spirits. Talk to us your thoughts about the trailer, not the release date. What's your initial expectations of Grand Theft Auto 6? My initial thoughts of this is basically it's a Bonnie and Clyde type of story because I've watched the reaction multiple like multiple like times and gone back and over like some Easter eggs or whatnot of my own opinion. So I'm like from what I'm guessing in the trailer, this is going to be a Bonnie and Clyde type of storyline, which I don't mind that at all. Of course, you know, a different change, of course, being back in Vice City and all, which I have not seen Vice City since Grand Theft 4. So... Well, Grand Theft Auto City stories yep, on the PSP. Yep. But but that's, Grand Theft what are you talking about? Watch. I'm tired too. So, but tired. but nonetheless, I'm happy for it. You just you know the release date. I knew like uh, but nonetheless, I'm happy for it. Um, it's been it's been about ten years, guys. Ten years. Been a, been a yeah, while. It's a, it's a decade. It's a decade since the release date. Well, I mean, consider how much money they pulled out of Grand Theft Auto Five with microtransactions in the online community, and to your point, they've invested a billion dollars into this. There's no telling how much more they're going to make off of this. Now, whether or not they exceed previous expectation based on what the initial thought process is when it comes to marketing this, that's a whole different conversation. But Lex, you literally work in gaming. Now, more so, you work, of course, in the Japanese RPG world and fighting world. You work at Capcom and stuff like that. What was your expectations on this uh, trailer, and what's your initial uh, take so far? I have high hopes for GTA 6 because it's been 10 years since we last had the GTA game. and Because the best GTA for me, the, the, the current gen era, was GTA 4, the, the New York one, hmm. the Liberty, the Grand Theft Auto 4. Mm-hmm. Five, five delivered, but for me, it, it went... It went Past its due due to the online and stuff because because we I think that GTA has like 
an expiration date when it comes to per games that they have to release like two to three years later. But GTA 5 has already overextended its stay now since we had GTA 6 now and it's going to be in 2025. I have expectations for this game to be good. And ha- I've seen the, the, the trailer itself when I woke up and then when I saw the trailer, like, oh, this graphics, it's going to be also good in PC, PS5, Xbox Series they S. They don't mention a PC. Bad well, you, you realize the history of Grand Auto is put on console first, then put it on PC two yeah. years later. But yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go to PC as well. You know, games yeah. they won't shy away from PC games. But when I saw oh, well. when I saw the graphics, like, oh yeah, this is gonna be a this is gonna be the most stream in Twitch for day one of the release date. And yeah, hopefully, people's uh, computers don't melt from it. Like I'm uh, also oh, Cyberpunk twenty seven seven fiasco initially. I'm also excited for the story since Kings and Bonnie and Clyde, since it's gonna be a two protagonist. Unlike the previous previous um, two la- two GTAs that it it has three protagonists. Yeah, but the last one was the one where you could play all three. Grand Theft Auto Four, you may have had like maybe really three protagonists, but you only played as one. You go Bellic. And as far as we know right now, yeah, there is two. Doesn't mean it will only be two, but honestly, I wouldn't mind that. And the whole Bonnie and Clyde thing, it's not the Wild Wild West. It feels more like a you know a, a pride thing. You know, like you know. This is what we are. This is the gang. We're family, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it feels like that initially, and the protagonist starts out seems like in jail or already gets arrested at some. Point. Also, so um, my expectations. I hope they give GTA Six a justice. Since Vice City was like a cult favorite, besides GTA San Andreas, and God rest his soul, Ray Liotta, who voiced Tommy Versetti. And I hope they had a tribute. To him in Vice City, since he was he was uh, he was a prominent figure in GTA Vice City, like an Easter egg or like a, a mural or something. Yeah, I I could see that somewhere. Maybe they'll have like his house. But uh, well said. I love the fact they're also adding that single lane highway out to the Key West uh, Island, similar to well Florida right here. In in reality, if nothing else, I almost just wonder though at this point how big this is going to be. Are they going to focus more on area itself well, or the in-depth area itself it's, i've heard like mixed spots about that well it's rumored the like map but like the map size is larger than gta 5 it's what i'm probably been, gonna it's, have it's like a uh what do you call this the like puerto rico or something cuba or something like that mm. connecting to florida like yeah and then, and then I heard Latin America. Rumor, you might be able to travel to other places. So whether or not you could travel, well, like there the are two thing. things I heard a few years back about GTA Six's setting. Apparently, there the Rockstar might. I don't know if this is online or for story mode or for both, but they might do the uh, the Fortnite method where they'll expand areas. Hey, Fortnite. Dude. I did hear that. Hey. Fortnite was good for what it was. What's, what's that? It's, it's, you know, a different genre. I'm a, I'm a soloist. You know me, guys. I walk alone. I play game alone. Okay. <laughs> they, they have they have they have Peter Griffin now in Fortnite. So yeah. I was surprised. Yeah. Like, well. uh, yeah. Also, they they have um uh, they have Metal Gear. Well, I mean, I'm sure they'll add whatever protagonist, whatever IP. Yeah, I recently because, I recently yeah. bought uh the Eminem skin, and I was so happy. Yep. I was like, yep. Oh, but, no, uh, Black, Black, one of the things you, I'm hoping for for GTA 6 yet? is that we get actual expansion packs on the story because they did promise that for 5 and then they just said F it because we have the online mode. I hate, and that's why I hate online mode. I swear all this is a money grab because I was hoping for more single player content. Meanwhile, oh. Sonic Frontiers gave me the most difficult single player content I've had in a Sonic game in my entire Sonic gaming experience. Yeah, here's the thing. No, apparently there was some people finally looked into it. There was audio files that said that yes, they were going to do expansion packs for the story mode, and then they they gave up on it. And all the continuation stuff you get is in the online mode. Wait, I can get well, two, get well, there's gonna be what you call this data mines gonna be leaked some yeah. some part in the future, and then they're gonna browse through the data mines and see what's the DLC, what's what's gonna be next, mm-hmm. what's gonna be like that. Yeah, that's that's the 
that's that happens in gaming. There's state of minds. Well, yeah, and yeah. people know how to hack the code and modify it into their own, uh, you know, selfish desire or weird. Well, yeah, yeah, as long as we don't get in a hot coffee fiasco, we're good. Uh, yeah. You know what? That wasn't surprising much. if that happens. That wasn't surprising if it happens again. To be fair, so uh, Eric, I know you already had like one uh, fantasy that you're hoping for our Grand Final Six. What other expectations do you hope for now with this next installment of a Rockstar Games in their, let's be honest, biggest franchise they've ever created? Don't go 2077 on us. <laughs> yes, don't do it. Yes, don't do that. 2077 we, we... was a great game, but initially it was not built the right way and that's what caused that backlash. Wait, I I it's hope still they better, it's still had a better recovery than No Man's Sky. Anyway, I hope they had the what they call this day one patch like when the game releases then the patch will update if there's any problems. Well, yeah, but did hard, Cyberpunk yeah. have a did have a day one patch and that didn't fix a thing? Well, that's C C C D Project Red's problem. <laughs> not not Rockstar, but Rockstar knows 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 the fans. But look, look, I think we can all agree on one thing, though. What? It Let will me. not be as broken and messed up and poorly handled than Fallout 76. Of course, Fallout. True. That's absolutely fair. In other all news, right. I just read a strange report that something happened in Arlington, Virginia. Oh, hmm? no. Here we go. What did you do? Oh, I didn't do anything. It's more like, uh, oh, my God, what the hell's going on? See, this and this is something I would expect to happen in like, in like. I know we're talking not talking about wrestling. We're just doing this little prologue thing. But this is what happened. Uh, show this. What am I looking at? Whoa! Yeah, Jesus! We sent a search warrant, and then that happened. Wait, wait! Did it that happen before in recent time in Philadelphia? I think. Well, Pennsylvania. I don't know anything about that, house but like, but all I know is is that that just that that happened literally two hours ago. Oh, the house just uh, I think had a gas leak. No, apparently this is a house that apparently the police hadn't executed a search search warrant and were about to go in, and then kaboom. Oh wow! Yeah, this is the world we live in. I hope I, I hope we get a Phil Collins cameo in this game as well, like they did in the air tonight in the original. Uh, oh 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 oh! I just have a thought. What if they start making references to Tony Khan in the game? <laughs> Eric. Oh come on! I mean, like it, they would have more of an excuse to do a reference to Tony Khan in the drug stuff than NWA did. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna make uh, Tony Khan Tony Montana type. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Shout out to my all-time favorite movie, Scarface. <sighs> the game, the world is yours, but I wouldn't give to see that. I even have the Scarface face. socks too. Dang, y'all. <laughs> that, that's, they're gonna, that's gonna they're gonna, hard. they're gonna, they're gonna probably have a mission where it's like a Scarface mission in GTA Six. You know, I can see that. I, I, I think there will be traveled other locations too. Now, whether or not they have other cities, like. Uh, Las Venturas or San Fierro via like plane ride or even a, a small version of Liberty City. I, I, I do think they are going to span out beyond the Miami area. If nothing else, if this is like a Bonnie and Clyde thing and Families Forever and you're trying to make it big, what's the biggest thing you oh, do? Oh, they should go City, to Jacksonville. Drugs. They should go to their own version of Jacksonville where there will be a statue in me in my honor since I was born there. Eric. <laughs> you, 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 got, you got you got a unique fantasy, bro. You got you got more you got more realistic possibility of that becoming a reality if you were to steal the Dreamweaver thing. Let their talk about it. Uh, Eric be <laughs> becomes the mayor of Jacksonville, Florida. I probably would be better us. than Ron DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they they should reference that in GTA Six. That 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 the freaking political figure of that. No, man. we should not. We should not be politically inaccurate in 2025. I mean, look, they, look, they, the I mean, I in GTA, anything can happen. I mean, they took shots at real life, anyways. That's fair. yeah. In fact, in fact, they included Karens. Hey, the Karen, oh yeah, I, I saw the trailer. There was like a video phone. There was one yeah. Karen I see in there. Yeah, yeah they did. And I was yeah, like, my Karen. god. Imagine how many of you have fantasized about beating up the Karens in real life. There's, there's, there, there are things that are, that are real life 
real life stuff gonna be put in G. Why do I feel can't... like this is gonna lead to more negative backlash than ever before? Rocks is gonna be like, no. fuck it, we're making more money than before. You know, you know, Rockstar has cynical dark humor, and of you know, it's like, I do. They're, they're, it, they're more cynical than South Park, and that says something. And it seems like social media is gonna be a big like a play a part in this too, from what it seems like what we saw in the trailer. Yeah, it's on social media app. What they're gonna call it? The freaking dog. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna name X triple X in the. <laughs> oh, I can see that. Oh, how about this? They actually call this like Twitter as a way to is take a shot at Elon Musk. Oh my god! No, I, I, you know, get Elon Musk is gonna storm to Rockstar headquarters, putting them a held at a gunpoint with a Elon Musk get and say, "I demand to be in a GTA game." <laughs> We've gone, we've gone down a really dark road here, and I think we need to pull the brakes before we go down any worse. Yeah, we, we didn't even talk about nightclubs or pit bull character in the game or something like that, or flow rider. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, seg- let, let, me, let me segue this before, Eric. Um, I remember oh. playing GTA when I was a kid, and I remember... I went to the strip club and my parents just walked in. I said, oh, no, I got it. <laughs> Did they move like this? Yeah, they were like, I was like, I was, I was like, uh, thirteen or fourteen when I played GTA. Oh my like, god! <laughs> oh my god! Okay, I, I got a question. When did GTA Three came out? Uh, oh, I, I think it was two thousand three. Two thousand three. It was like one of the earliest editions. The yeah. earliest ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think GTA Three. GTA Three was two thousand one. Um, yeah, okay, I think that was. Say this just to make everyone gasp and lay shock. I think that was my the... mom introduced me to it when I was six. Mm. Wait, so I've, I think... playing, so I've been playing this franchise since I was a six-year-old. There was a there was a wow. controversy about one mission in GTA Three that they changed it due to nine eleven. Yeah, yeah I'm about to say we realized GTA yeah. Three was literally the year of so uh, you know, and of course that changed the very fabric of America uh, as we know it, but. Overall, I, I, again, I will say this: I'm a I'm a fan for Simfway for the '80s for the nightclub life that was uh, Vice City, and again, the last the, the the that's still my favorite city in the Grand Theft Auto uh, franchises. I played them all. I'll, I'll admit it; I haven't done the activities that he's talking about because I was always into single player narrative that compelled me. Where I shoot some dickhead in the face. But that being said, it, I, I'm I'm looking forward to this. I am and. I really am curious how they really take it into this different direction. The fact you now can play a female protagonist. Now you're a female protagonist in the most extreme franchise ever known to mankind. Sorry, Saints Row. You fucked up after Saints Row 3. Get ready for colorful suits, neon lights, fast cars, drug heists. Bright uh, city. Pretty beautiful, ladies. Beautiful beaches, pretty ladies, everything in between. They had enough. There. Did you see the way, the depth of the game when it came to how many individual NPCs mm-hmm. they had on screen at that beach alone? <laughs> Imagine. Oh wait, what's what's that uh, AEW uh, event for the one with like a Vice City type Road Rager? Road yeah, Rager, yes. Rage. Yeah, I I hope when GTA Six comes out, they promote it on Road oh, Rager. God. If AEW gets sponsored by Grab It Bottle 6, game over. Tony Khan will never live it down. Yeah. He, be... Tony Khan, if you're watching this, make it happen. No, don't make that happen. That's a poor business decision. We may be TV 14, but we're not trying to turn wrestling rated R. Hey, I hey, I mean, I mean, AEW had Sega and they had Yakuza. It's, a, it's an M rated game. Yakuza is not nearly as. Ballistic as grab a bottle, though. Yeah, rated R. Yeah, rated R about to hit on Wednesday. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Um, also, speaking uh, of, do, does anyone know a wrestler named Valtina Loca? No, uh, no. Is, it a, is, it, is it the person on Mexico? Uh, uh, I think, yeah, she works in New Mexico. Uh, oh. CML or Triple A? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know much about her. I just found I found out something about her. Apparently, her wrestling career has prematurely ended due to neck injury. Oh, mm. possibly spinal stenosis. 
Yeah, I mean, the nature of the beast at the end of the day, again, the, the risk that these men and women take for our entertainment, no matter the company, no matter our thoughts towards the company or towards its leaders, uh, you got you got to respect that. Well, anyway, as we pull the plug now and go game over on Grand Battle 6, we will wait in anticipation for the next trailer. I'm sure we'll get further crazy, super ridiculous analysis from all the outlets like Inside Gaming, IGN, uh, Game Informer, and whatever YouTuber you can think of that has a chance to speak their mind on the microphone towards this. But if nothing else, I think the hype is definitely real, and it's been a long damn time since we've sport around by city in a ferrari or whatever that car used to call it furnace there it is a furnace so uh we'll see what happens all right well let's go ahead and shift gears back to what this is about at the end of the day and let's talk about all things wrestling again it's been a moment guys we haven't talked before our full gear we haven't talked about uh cm punk although uh shout out to my brother uh, okay I- cm punk coming back yay or nay That's okay, here, here, here's the thing the first thing i did when i heard this i was like well, if you all need me, I am going on Twitter for about a couple of days. I'll see you all again because I know what the community oh, was going to do after that. Eric, why would you dot, 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 dive into that madness? That's not getting down with the sickness. That's taking a risk with utter madness. Well, after, after I left social media for about 24 to 48 hours, I decided to come back, see how things are going, saying, hey, everybody, how's everyone doing? Oh, wait, uh, another article piece about how AEW is dead because Punk went to WWE after he got fired? Okay, goodbye. See ya. I'll be back tomorrow. And how many times have we heard this narrative of AEW is dying? How many now? Uh, let's see, probably 50 or 40, maybe 60. Countless of times, probably. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you look at the figures, the numbers don't lie. How does a company die when they're only, you know, uh, I'm just going to put this in respect there uh, real quick in the uh, best way I can. Now, I'm in five years old. They've done eight pay-per-views now from the original four. They've made more money than ever. They booked the biggest event in wrestling history. Eat your heart out, WWE. And they're I mean, still going despite the controversy. I mean, they brought Ring of Honor, so there's that as well. Well, and, and then... Some people- Think Ring of Honor is on live support, considering that the Ring of Honor Championship is being merged in this first ever uh, Triple Crown. But before we get too ahead, of, too far ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and uh, rewind a little bit and get some quick thoughts regarding uh, Full Gear. I mean, people have mixed feelings about, of course, this match being, of course, was it overbooked? Should Jay White have lost in the way that he did, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. After the Young Bucks had their little tantrum attack, sorry, King, I know you're going to talk more about this. What's the state right now of the elite? And speaking of the elite, did we just witness the most violent Texas death match or just violent death match in wrestling history? And it's swerved now a uh, made man at a point of uh, no return. And with the women's division getting both reset for the TBS title and the AEW Women's World Championship, is AEW finally going in a better direction with their women's division? And also Sting had his last match, of course, in Los Angeles, stomping grounds of California. That was rather a uh, fun way to get Sting one last hurrah out there on the West Coast. So let's go ahead and give everybody's initial thoughts about AEW full gear real quick before we really dive into what AEW's come now, where we're at with this round robin uh, tournament. Eric, I'll let's start with you. What was your initial uh, takeaway from AEW uh, full gear? How'd you feel well, about let's the see. Show I and- was just hoping for a good show. We were all doing well. I haven't watched the shows in a while because I've been having work and all that. And then right. I just, then after everything that happened with Punk and the Elite and all that, it's just been kind of harder to watch stuff. Um, <laughs> Hangman drink blood. <laughs> and that's the tweet. And that's the headline. Yeah, and, and, tonight. and when I saw it, I was like, Oh, the amount of people that are going to be pissed and understandably concerned about his health. Apparently, that was planned by Swerve and Hangman. It's like, okay, can we do this? Yes. Okay. And here's the thing. If some people say this was the most violent death match they ever saw, I was like, mainstream-wise, yes. If we went to the independent scene, then it'd probably be much worse. Let's be honest here. Nick freaking Gage wasn't involved. Neither was a pizza cutter. That speaks volumes. Sponsored by Domino's. (laughs) <laughs> Let's not go and, there. And then, and then, oh, I saw you. I know. I saw. I watched you and James go over the whole sh- the whole match with it, and seeing how squeamish he got, I was laughing like, "Oh god, this is." I, I missed that. But guys, yeah, Eric, you realize I watch all things wrestling. I've seen June Kasai try to take a man's eye out with razor blades. Yeah, I, 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 know, like, I know. I know. Remember, rem- no, remember, remember, um. 
Okay, the dark era of WWE, the Thunderdome era. Remember what happened to Ray's eye? Oh, geez. we don't talk about that. Malachi, Leave that alone. The fact that Ray and Malachi are technically dead in the WWE canon, yet somehow survive being thrown off a building by <laughs> they got the oh jeez, they got the eight. That was that was Yeet before full Fall Guys made Yeet a thing, and let's be honest, Fall Guys made Yeet a thing first, not Jey Uso. But anyway, but yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I was selling because I'm supposed to do that. That's how you that's how you sell stuff, Eric. At the end of the day, was I a little bit taken away that Heyman and Page drinks for his butt? Yes. Everything else, eh? John Moxley. Well, James, James went as far as to say he forgave Hangman, which is saying a lot. Well, but this is James we're talking about. God bless that man. And of course, shout out to the entire W family, Megan Chiba, Casey Flynn, of course, our party man, uh, JD. I, so, again, we are ATW. I almost yeah, got to uh, that at the beginning. And I was like, so thinking to myself when I saw Swerve's Prince Nana go ahead and being basically, okay, I'm probably going to be killed by Hangman. At least let me die with a hilarious obituary. I'm going to die the way I came in, swerving, and then I'm going to spasm. <laughs> I remember I when the blocks got, sh- got shot through the neck. <laughs> that that, that, block that, that match, the back the match the between neck. Swerve and Hangman made me cackle when Nana just sta- stood there in the apron and just danced, and then Swerve just hit it with a dead eye. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I think there was an you, there was an edit on tw- on Twitter or X or what you may call it. Fuck you, Elon Musk. Um, someone like smack Prince Nana, and then the Sonic rings came out. Oh God! Mm. Of course, of course, why not? Because you know we just got done with the freaking like a dragon street fight literally the Wednesday right before this. I mean, so yeah, let's say I got fake. I'm why just gonna keep saying it. They missed the opportunity there for that match to go ahead and have a street fighter cameo cameo style event. Have everyone fight backstage, and then it just pause with Konosuke to Kesuke and Kenny Omega. And then you see street fighter graphics pop up on TV, and then they just go ahead and be like, broken. Uh, they, since since it's Sega, they, <laughs> since it's Sega, they missed the opportunity to to just um throw rings at each other. I thought you were saying they missed the opportunity for uh, Swerve and the freaking uh, Garmies to roll up in a crazy taxi. Oh yeah, speaking of Swerve, um, House of Torture just got betrayed by Gates of Agony. It, it was it was a uh, severe. It was a, it it was a Swerve. I was say, did, did, but you're trying to get the word out. You want me to say it, yeah. But so, should please. I just go ahead and do this for the heck of it because I am the agent of chaos? Just do it. You do realize that now opens the possibility that House of Torture can show up on AEW television in Revenge. Just, 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 just. Forbidden Door 2024. No, 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 no. Ring of Honor pay per view one off. Thank you and good night. All right. That's it. That's what you do. You just do it at Ring of Honor in the buy in. There it is. I booked this show. I booked a match for you, Tony Khan. You're welcome. Pay me royalties in 2025. <laughs> As for Jay White and MJF, I'm, here's the thing. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I thought the match was okay. I wasn't really as mad like people were on it because I was like, how many people praise Cena? And they do it all the time with him. So Cena never got that deep in a match to go that far. To oh, yeah. Win. Speaking of speaking of that match, I love the, the over-the-top rope cutter spot. Yeah, that's where MJF torn his labrum. Oh, yeah. my crazy, God. Crazy son of a Well, like, well another why? trip to... Why would you do that? Wait, wait. Another trip to Dr. Bo Hightower, the chiropractor. Well, I'm sure that's going to be a great interview. And also, I think it was very foolish that he did that freaking elbow drop on the collapsed table floor. <laughs> Jay White. The, the table botch, and then he just elbow dropped it. It's like, yeah, okay, but what, still, yeah, it. Like, and now you people, know why people don't do that. And, and people were also going in saying, like, why did this match happen? Why why didn't Jay White win? And yada, yada, yada. And like, okay, we can have this argument, but at the same time, you kept saying you want storytelling. This is what you asked for. Now you're not satisfied. Also, so, there were reports unverified that Jay White was pissed about the ending of the match and how the whole thing. But I uh, guess what someone decided to do because uh, the idea of journalism is dead. Journalistic integrity died the moment that people believed Dave Meltzer was a gospel. But go ahead. Uh, someone actually said they looked into it 
and said Jay White was, quote, mad because he was thinking this. Okay, we got the storyline whatnot, and then and then immediately afterwards they said, yeah, we probably could have done that better. Well, you only get one take Not, on live TV. I deserve to be the world champion mentality that people were aiming for. Well, again, short, short-sightedness, the big what if. Go book a better narrative if you think you can't use in chat DBT, you freaking fools. Not chat yeah, GBT. Going on t- Not you chat GBT. If was still in power, he would have he definitely tried that. It wouldn't surprise me. But overall, I thought it was okay for what it's worth. And hey, MJF finished the story, unlike Cody. Uh, that <laughs> All right, that's it. Oh, right. Nakamura has his, gave his motive to why he's attacking Cody. Oh, so that's the next feud for okay. You yeah, do Cody's, something before you get Nakamura's Cody reason, Roman 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 Yeah, it turns out ahead. turns out all that tease that Nakamura was doing was all for Cody. Yeah, it turns out that was the whole, whole I, I'm waiting and all well, that. You got too much. You gotta give Cody something to do after they fought well, Judgment Day uh, 57 times and beat them in war games. You gotta yeah. do it the right Well, Nakamura out. has said me and Neely are not so different. And about how they never about how he never finished his story and how he's gonna take away Cody's story. And I was like, but not but Nakamura, your story mainly consisted because your boss was racist, I think. Well, again, bygone era. And even then, and also he, also Cody had the perfect opportunity <laughs> to, to, to try and cut back, saying, like, could have said how he may you you like he may have failed to get his story ended this year, but he'll at least get it again next year and tease the whole Roman feud and knock and then you could just say Wow, you just destroyed that guy without even touching him. Or or he could bring up how whereas Nakamura fade into obscurity, Cody Rose is more over than ever. Eh. By the way, WWE and TKO merger has been called into question again. Wow. Again? Shocking. Why am I not surprised? Yeah, apparently a, a lawsuit has come out because and you wanna know when this lawsuit came out? Well, considering that lawsuits can really be older than a hard inquiry on your credit report, go for it. It came out about 24 to 48 hours after the big Survivor Series moments. Oh. <laughs> so yep. it was like, okay, everyone. Vince McMahon basically came in and basically said, momentum, and I'm not getting any credit. I need to do something stupid. And long and behold, the merger was called into question, and... Someone is filed a lawsuit alleging Sam Shale's process for Mega Deal. Mainly, the whole thing is basically this: there were other better offers on the table. Dodo just went with the Endeavor one just to keep Vince in power, and that also failed miserably. By well, the end of the day, Vince is going to find one way or another to be connected. Vince is WWE. not going to quit. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's going to always find a way to still be a part of this system, part of the business. But that being said. He just goes build a new company since he thinks he's that great. He's got the money to do it, but I don't think he has the, uh, you know, the supporting power to do so. Besides, WRA owns most of the world as it is. Before you know it, they might own more than Disney. Lord help us. Let's stay back on AEW, though. That being said, eh, interesting thoughts, uh, Eric. Uh, King, what was your thoughts with AEW full gear? I mean, again, usually that's our show that's like, that's the end of the year. Thanks. Okay. Now we get ready for the next year. Oh, fuck. Freaking December 30th. But and that being yep. said, uh, what was your thoughts with uh, full gear? I know you being the elite, you really got to be wondering now what's the future for all your boys in the elite. <sighs> saying Kenny Omega was the only one with a victory and it was at the expense of your young bucks. With the expense of my young bucks of going back to 2021, which I never thought I'd see. But on this time, it was more of Matt Jackson low blowing Kenny Omega in their home state of California, which I did not see that coming at all. And now, <clears throat> now it turns out that, you know, with, you know, the segue of being uh, the elite gotten taken over by the Dark Order now. In which that text was allegedly sent by John Silver saying you messed up by selling your rights to BTE over to us, which I have learned that would now be part of a storyline with Cabana and Brandon, and is basically going to lead the Bucks to fully turn heel. And for what I've been told, and for what I've been rumored, that um, 2024 Sting's last match will possibly it's possibly rumored to be a tag match, and for what it is rumored to be. It's the Bucks. What? 
So it's gonna be Darby and Sting. It's gonna be Bucks. Darby and Sting versus the Bucks. So it's it's oh, rumored. Yeah, Darby just rumored. survives. Not ever. I mean, wait, did nah, they did? Perfect. I think they did this before, but as a trios match at Forbidden Door. It was at Forbidden Door. You are correct. When it was just when it was Hikaleo and ELP came in. Mm. So that's a very unique choice. For Sting's last match, I like I said, like I said, it's rumored. So just like I said, take that away. As long as it doesn't involve Ric Flair, we're good. I mean, Ric Flair, yeah. he took a low blow for what it was worth. He took a low blow at Full Gear, so he could take a bump down there anyway. As long as he's not getting in the ring, I, mean, I don't think we need to worry about it. So, but yeah, this this little uh, Bucks heel tandem is going to it's going it's all part of storyline and basically cult. Cabana and Brandon Cutler will play a part in this storyline. The direct, the, the creativity is now where is where is this going to go? I mean, we've already seen the Dark Order take over BTE. I mean, we're there. There are already two episodes deep to it, so I'm interested to see, to see where this goes with the Bucks being them them going back to 2021, while the Golden Jets are basically going after Big Bill and Ricky Starks. So, okay, I, I, I told King this. I had an idea how the Bucks can really piss the whole world off. Oh, gosh, here we go. He did tell me this, so y'all about to learn it. Y'all about to hear it. What if the Bucks come back and they're filming a live stream, they're on the air on TV, and then they just delete the YouTube channel? I can see that. I could literally see that just just because I could literally see that actually. <laughs> oh, by Be the like, way, this is uh, not our just shit. Like you all know the bidding war twenty twenty four just got bigger. Bigger? Or, or what? Because guess who is leaving the NWA permit one hundred percent? Camille. Yeah, I know. We're gonna talk about that absolutely when we talk about you know we reach the. Uh, Years end, but what's going to be the years to start, and what could it mean for some people whose contracts are coming up? You know, you can always talk about rumors, you can talk about reports, but here's the realistic possibility: if a contract's expiring, they could end up somewhere else in the industry. And I've been saying for the longest time, Camille, even she wants to go to bigger, brighter stages and show what she's capable of, and I think she's more than capable I, of. I would be also surprised if it was because Billy Corgan kept making stupid comments. Well, that too, but also Kenzie Page now is the NWA Women's World Champion. Yeah. Good for her at 19 years old. And it, all, it all started when Billy Corgan did that freaking segment that lost their TV deal and kapoop. Now they're just on the app. That's it. Yep. He's lucky he's on the app and not reprimanded if anything else. Okay, so we talked about uh, the elite. Still talking about full gear a little more. Any other thoughts you got about full gear, uh, King, before I give it to uh, Lex here? Um, let me see. Any more thoughts? Um, besides Hangman and Swerve having a five star classic death match of what we've seen. Um, star ratings are over. Star ratings are still irrelevant to me, but I digress. I'm surprised you didn't talk but, about that. Oh, <clears throat> hold up. Timeless. Yes, your timeless era has officially been ushered. Uh, the, the timeless era has begun, as Miss Hikaru, H- Hikaru, as she likes to put it. And now we have a. We've uh, gone back seventy years. Thanks no, we did time. not. We have gone into the gold expedition era of timeless Tony Storm here, and now we are going to enter dynamite of her and Sky Blue. <laughs> So you gotta learn. You gotta, hey hey hey. You gotta learn your Tony Tony Storm pronunciations, okay? Dynamite, rampage, and collision. You can't pay me enough while sober <laughs> to say either of those show, any of the three shows as such. Look, 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 no, no, we know you have integrity. Damn it right. is better than the people who bid at something at Survivor Series because guess what? Someone bid it on. Oh, I've heard this one. What? Okay, so autograph culture has finally peaked at the point of absurdity. You mean in the airport thing? No, no, no. No, no, <laughs> no Rhea Ripley signed an autograph, and then she licked it. Oh, and, that one. And it Is, sold for that... 180 bucks. Was this in the live event, right? Yeah. Yep. That, that one? yeah Survivor that one. Series. And I was like... You realize they're probably going to be 
trying to clone her, or or they're gonna feel like this is justified to be further weird at the airport. Oh my god, if that happens, if they clone Rhea Ripley, that will be that will be what the hell. <laughs> Where's the problem? Japan is trying to clone people as we speak, but who knows? That's all a different conversation. Even you wouldn't know anything about that, Lex, and you freaking be there a lot, but you work mm-hmm. in the gaming industry. Uh, but that being said, yes, uh, again, as I said, both women's division reset. Sky Blue led to a new TBS champion as Julia Hart finally won her first title. The youngest champion now in uh, AEW history, if being perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. Congrats to uh, her. Orange Cassidy finally got the one with that Luda in the last year and a half. Good for him. And John Mazda looked like something that literally could not die. And that was fucking ridiculous. Six orange punches. Jesus. Uh, and again, the. Never elite, mind. He's not taking his vacation yet. Right. I, I still don't understand why this man hasn't taken a vacation. Uh, I, I think he's his own worst enemy, for being perfectly honest here. And I thought the MJF and Jay White match, it did what it needed to do. Some people think the story should have been breathed more. Like maybe you should have like more you know, in between matches. And, and again, that just comes out from a presentation standpoint where you think, like, we don't have time to breathe at their extreme circumstance. Then we got into this. But they fought, they fought for 30 minutes. I don't know how much room to breathe they could go for. I think they were talking about up before that when you fought Adam Cole was actually going to fight on one leg. Yeah, like, so. I was, like, even I was confused at that because I was like, really? And then they the, the graphic came up, poof, on our screen and was like, no, like, well, what are we doing fair, here? That, that was more like MJF telling um, Adam Cole to like, distract them long enough to so he can get back to the show and pull a John Moxley and steal the ambulance. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I mean that's fair. As he drove in with the ambulance, and still hot. It was that was leg. that was Sting uh, Starcade. I forgot what year he did that. Uh, ninety. Oh God, you're talking to a guy that grew up on WWE. I can't recall. Jeff and JJ can chastise me later. It's not like they already do. Sometimes. Someone even someone kept saying that this is like w, AEW's finger poke of doom, like they have a show long thing storyline going, and then you get no. It was it, and it I wasn't was like, nowhere like that. I like that. I, I, and I, I even I even I was a little kid watching WCW around that time, so it was nowhere near like that. No. Plus, it, also, plus it's been a lot longer. Speaking of WCW, someone pitched an idea that when I heard this, I was like. I'm not sure if that's a WCW 2000 route, but it'd be pretty dumb. They oh, wanted boy. to pitch this idea that Roman Reigns is the reason why Yeet got banned from WWE and, and make Jey Uso join, rejoin the bloodline and he'll bring it back because that's a thing now people want to yeah, do. That, that would be a WCW 2000 route, even though Jay took it to Instagram lot. I mean, Instagram has said uh, he took a picture backdrop of the Usos and the whole bloodline holding championship besides Solo and saying, ah, I miss the good times. Yeah. 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 You know, being abused by your cousin. Got it. Yeah. 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 I mean, that, that's Jimmy Uso's job now, but that's a whole different conversation. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did you see that clip where G- where Jimmy Uso I'll got give Jimmy credit. Off. I'll give Jimmy credit. That was brilliant. I'll give Jimmy credit. I saw the clip. He literally laid out even beyond the freaking show going off the air after getting hit with the RKO. I'll, I'll, I'll give Jimmy credit. That was brilliant. That, that actually, no, they, 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 the people should just like what they call it instead of rolling him out, they just said lift him up and then put him down and then. Keep rolling the ring. They couldn't. They couldn't lift him up. He was dead weight, right? So you know, I mean. Anyway, uh, and, and, and yeah, I, I thought Full Gear was fine for what it was worth. I mean, at the end of the day, I ate their pay you still don't disappoint you. And Mm-mm. yeah, the quantity might be a little bit excessive, but <sighs> if you think about it, quantity because eleven matches. I demand the HBO Max streaming deal now. Yeah. It, it needs to happen. It needs to happen. The, I, I can't spend four hundred dollars on AEW because it needs to happen. WBD's contact. You say, hey, uh, do, do you think you can do twelve shows a year? Oh Jesus! If we Is if they do get that deal in twenty twenty four and they do up to twelve, oh buckle up, buckle yeah, God, up. God, good Lord, help our uh, wallets. But- Look, if they do that, they the only way they'll justify it unless if you know they they go ahead and go on HBO Max. Again, dude, time will tell. I still see the industry is not going to be the same ever again following uh, this year when it comes to contracts and superstars, individuals, and network deals coming to deals. Hell, Raw still don't have a home yet. Raw might be moved away from Monday nights, and that's still freaking insane to think about. And Nick Khan oh. off, and then Nick Khan went to uh, WBD for their TV rights deal, and then WBD turned them down in October. Yeah. In fact, it got reported that they even knew it was a long shot. 
So uh, yeah, you guys see what WBD is already invested in EW. So so um, it looks in like let's see, Amazon. They say it was in cont- uh, contention to get Raw. Yeah, when I heard that, I, here's here's my take. I was like. Uh, I, I, I joked it. I joked this on, on social media, like Stephen, the demos. What about the Nelson demo ratings? Oh, <laughs> like I mean, zero point zero, man. <laughs> the demo <laughs> ratings. Just just... A clip of two four, two crazy executives going crazy in a skit and then blowing their heads off because they didn't have numbers. Look at the end of the day, the numbers don't matter. It's the advertisers that matter because that's well, technically the numbers do matter because if the ratings aren't good, then they'll risk being canceled. And I kind of don't want that to happen. But if they go on streaming, if they go to Amazon, they'll probably that's be why I said right go to streaming. You can't get canceled because you always will have some sort of audience there. Let's be honest here. We live in the streaming well, true, era. but here's the thing two things. One, if a if WWE goes to Amazon, they'll probably be on Prime, and then you have to basically spend a hundred bucks a year just to watch Raw. Mm. And Prime also has issues as well, but that I like the, they're going to have Fallout soon on TV, so that's going to hopefully be good. But. Uh, uh, but I, but I was just kidding. I've been joking about the ratings and demos because everyone keeps treating the Nelson rings as gospel now, and because AEW exists, therefore it contradicts their worldview. And now WWE's like, they don't mean anything to us. I'm like, we're on Amazon. No, Vince. No, Triple H. You're destroying my reality that you gave me. Dot dot dot. This is not the reality you wish to be a part of. If you could do the time warp again, you would certainly try. All right. Well, anyway, as we stay back on this real quick, before we talk more about WWE and Survivor Series particularly, Lex, do you have any last thoughts regarding um, AEW full gear? Any takeaways? I know you're happy for your boy Orange Cassidy, if nothing else. Oh, by the way, shout out to uh, Buddy Matthews and Claude Castanoli. Great match from the uh, Zero Hour. Sleeper match of the, of the whole night, if I'm being perfectly honest. Hmm. But, Lex, any thoughts you have to take away from AEW full gear before we venture into the world of Sports Hmm, I don't have any takeaways, but it deliv the the whole card delivered, and dot, dot, we dot. didn't get the devil. That's the no, only problem. but now, now, yes. now we're getting now we're getting more of that. And I know we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. So overall, full gear. Take up what you will, folks. I thought it was a great pay-per-view. A lot of people thought it was a great pay-per-view. The AW presentation still needs to work when it comes to what do you do in between a match? How do you tell a story for the bigger matches on the card? Maybe this is where you put in those video packages from the countdown versus on the buy-in. Dot, dot, dot. That was two hours long or an hour and a half long. I lost track of time. But still, I enjoyed AW uh, full gear. All right, let's go ahead and venture into WWE as we're talking about the man. We're talking about politics. We're talking about what happened in the Windy City. Let's go ahead and talk about Survivor Series War Games. As we uh, saw, it was five. I did not watch it. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it except for the men's War Games match. That's it. Well, I mean, let's be honest. It was a a two-match show. Let's be honest here. I only watched the women's and the men's. That's it. Uh, It's War Games. You watch the War Games matches, dot, dot, dot. But I will say this, Miss, awesome attempt, but you're no good for forever the end of the Oh, oh, oh this match. I, I got I gotta bring something up. Apparently WWE was WWE had put out a new edict what? prior to this match. Hmm? What? The edict is okay, uh more or less Chris Jericho is dead to us, so do not bring up his record. So don't oh, bring yeah, up the times right. he won his nine time intercontinental yeah, championship. They, they told him they're no longer allowed to bring that up. Jericho is dead to us until he, he got comes back deleted. and then he life. If, if, uh, apparently, Lex. Uh, apparently. Yeah. All right. Well, let me just go ahead and some of this real quick, and then uh, we'll start with uh, the, uh, Lex since he actually looked at both War Games matches. Because, again, I respect the workers, but at the end of the day, WWE still underwhelms me. Gooper is still the best champion in WWE. Bite me if you think otherwise. Uh, Dragon Lee, Sandals Escobar, good sleeper Lucha Libre match. As Sandals right now really has established his heel character. We'll see how I did hear about that match. I did hear about that. that was like almost yeah, NXT I, I black it. and gold like. Yeah, it, it, it felt like my NXT. Damn it, but I digress. It uh, was a high Rhea, caliber match. Rhea Ripley wore Atlas Chaps. That's all you need to know about this. But a uh, great <laughs> match by uh, Zoe Stark and her uh, attitude. And then the real I, part. I, I, like I feel like that match was just a squash match. 
I don't know if I would call it squash because they let Zoe Stark get a lot of offense in. She just didn't have a chance in hell of winning. Uh, and then, of course, uh, everyone had their chips, right? They didn't send hugs because they were sponsored not by uh, Free to Play. <laughs> they were sponsored by Ruffles. But, hey, Eel Sky, she dropped like a bomb on... Never mind. Uh, Eel Sky did a trash can spot off the top. And uh, we're really seeing damage control, damage done to Bailey. And it might be uh, irreparable damage based on what we've heard on SmackDown lately. But, Kyrie hey, Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch, they called... Co- since she came back. Charlotte Flair uh... and Becky Lynch, they coexisted. So, there you go. And, uh... And one have ruffles afterwards. Wait, 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 wait. Speaking of ruffles, did you guys saw the the segment between R Truth, Pretty Deadly, and Alpha Academy? I heard he I had back, I, like I said, I didn't watch it. I had to I heard Truth came back too. The, every, everyone, everyone in the everyone in the internet was like, the, you know the Drake meme, right? The, like this. Mm-hmm. CM Punk returning. Randy Orton returning. Yeah. R Truth returning. <laughs> oh god yeah <laughs> our, our best truth. return of the night goes to our truth <laughs> oh lex he's a piece i mean let's i mean i mean uh, he's right uh, you know what maybe he's not wrong but also the viper did return eventually as the men's war games took place the longest time Don mysterio was actually in a cage and uh we saw uh, <laughs> even Dunham go free falling into an rko he was thrown into the oh Viper's yeah pit. Like oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah! Oh yeah! Wait, wait. That that spot reminds me of what happened in the Lion King. Yeah, long, long live the king! The down, down goes the arch. <laughs> Five into the wilder breeze that was Randy Orton's RKO, and Randy Orton looked great here. And I'm glad he only took a couple bucks. He looked he, jacked. He, he, yeah, he looked jacked. I think yeah. the, the 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 perks of being injured, you had to work out to the fullest. Also, well, yeah. uh, he said he probably will stick around for 10 more years. Yep, he's oh like my 10 God. more years. <laughs> well, uh, uh, look, hindsight's twenty twenty. At the end of the day, we talked about before, chasing the dragon. Know your physical boundaries beyond your own mentality. That's all I got to say about that. Then again, Brian Danson, we'll talk more about that. Yeah, we'll talk he's more about that. With a broken arm and a broken eye, but I digress. Yep. All right, Lex. Well, talk about us about this two match show for your uh, opinion. What was Survivor Series War Games to you besides this guy showing up at the end? Oh, God, Sam Punk. No, I'm just glad Randy's back in, in WWE. Yep, it was like, I like when he went in the cage, it's like, you're stuck with me. He brought yeah. the intensity. He brought the intensity in the war games. Like he hit a couple of vintage Randy Orton. He was like going nuts with his signature. He has a missed opportunity here. The scoop slam, the draping DDT. I thought the five yeah. stereo draping DDTs was a really cool spot. And then the legacy throwback with Randy Orton giving Cody Rhodes finish this guy off. Boom, crossroads. Here's the thing: Randy Orton could have said that line a whole lot better. He could have said. You don't seem to understand. I'm not locked in here with all you. You're locked in here with me. Yeah, but this was the guy that was coming back as a quiet baby face. It wasn't. I mean, there months. was a little bit of psychology when you thought he was going to RKO Jey Uso, and then uh, again, history, folks. But uh, the, it did yeah, that, I saw. I heard the audible. I know what you did, and Jay said, "Chill, Uso, chill, Uso." Mm-hmm. That's it. Not oh very, yeah. Not, not Speaking of Randy Orton returning on that in that particular match. Go ahead. I saw flashbacks of him of of bald headed Randy Orton, the the champion the WWE champion Randy Orton, the menace Orton. Uh, at least he didn't punk kick nobody, although I wish he would have punk kicked judgment day because I'm tired of seeing this <laughs> it, Okay, that that one that one thing takeaway that I didn't didn't like about the war games, Randy did not RKO Ray Ripley. Oh yeah, what a missed opportunity out of nowhere! Why Ray Ripley is trying to get them to do the cash in before the war games match? Began. No, no, no. Imagine, imagine this. He's just trying to attend to to Dirty Dominic Mysterio, and then Randy is like RKO out of nowhere off screen. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that Randy Orton hit a woman. I'm just saying, with an RKO. I mean. The list goes on. Um, Tell you came in there. The list. May Young, Stacy Keebler, Nia Jax, Rhea Ripley. You're next. 
What about Beth Phoenix? She he already got her. Yeah. Oh yeah, that too. And so, that's yep. Stephanie, Stephanie McMahon, I think, also had one too. Yeah. Yeah. That's like five or six already. That was five. Maria yeah, gonna be five. six. And yeah, it's like Randy Orton's on SmackDown now. I hate yep. he, he RKO Nick all this as an emphatic exclamation point. And I think the only reason well, and the only way you could get that unless Rhea Ripley brings herself to SmackDown, and since they still have the tag titles, well, they could probably do that. Brand split, LOL. Well, anyway. welcome, welcome to the WWE, Nick Aldis. That's your initiation, getting an RKO from Randy. And here's your Royal Rumble main event, courtesy of SmackDown. It'll be Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns at the Royal So Rumble. then what do we do with LA Knight since he still said he was going after them? Uh, they'll put him in the Royal Rumble just because. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. He, he also, um, Kevin Owens is apparently injured. Again? Yeah, it, man. You can't catch a break. He can't. Yeah. yeah that, I initially thought this was a storyline that they were doing because WWE kept talking about it, but then I was like, considering they had him wrestle with bro with bruised ribs, I wouldn't put it out of the question. Yeah. First, first bruised ribs. Now his hand is injured. I yeah. Think. Yes. Goodness. Yeah. Man, that's from the worker, punching man, both. That, that, that worker always man, that's fighting. from punching both Austin Theory and Logan And apparently Austin he was supposed to be Logan Paul Waller. for the U.S. title. Hopefully not. But, like, that Wait, was the plan. Who Who's your prediction for the for the last contender in the eight, uh, the eight competitor for Logan's? Uh, uh, that. Uh, oh, it's uh, more like, I don't care, it's Logan Paul. <laughs> Uh, no, because it, it says from Paul. NXT. I yeah, think I, I, I know. I, I just, I, I just have no interest in the match. For me, I think th- there was. I think I saw um, an Instagram uh, story. I think Trick uh, M- M- Mello Carmelo Hayes posted it. He was holding yeah. the US title. It, it probably hints it. He's gonna be. But he's already done bit. everything. He's already done everything in January. So Tom Brady, but he's still there. True. But also, uh, Carmelo Hayes has the last chance to get into the Iron Survivor Challenge. So, honestly, if he doesn't win that, that might be his way out before they do him versus Trick Williams, which I do think will be where they stand to deliver. And that might be Carmelo Hayes' one song. But uh, different conversation. But, yeah. Uh, King, uh, I know you didn't watch it, but uh, what was your thoughts about the War Games match? It really was the meat and potatoes of this little card, if nothing else. The men's war games delivered as I expected, especially with all top names in that match. I mean, it was good to see Randy yeah. back. It was good to see Randy back, you know, after being away for 18 months, looking jacked as ever. Like, it, you can tell that he missed every, he missed, you know, being out in the crowd, missed being here and everything, missed being in the ring, and it showed, especially hitting uh, his vintage stuff and then draping DDT and then RKO, which it was good to see. But then afterwards, though, as soon as I saw the watermark copyright, uh, you know, WWE, blah, 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 on the right side, I was like, oh, we're about to have the show ending. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> well. I mean, well, every, uh, my reaction to that was like, is this is this a joke or is this like for reals? And then the moment he came out, it is real. It's real. It's damn real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but imagine, but imagine, but imagine being forty-four years old and you sign a multi-year deal, and it now has a clause in your contract. It has a behavioral clause in your contract of including one mess up, and you're done. Just hey. don't, just just don't make it um, brawl out three point <laughs> Oh, he's on a short. He's on a short leash. I mean, he's gonna be. He's gonna be on his best behavior. Someone actually said, "Walk the line." All he's gotta do is walk the line. Look, someone even said they're going to give CM Punk three years, three years for him to not make a mess. So JJ and James, they did this little discussion about is it best for business? Is it good for the business that CM Punk is still part of the business, let alone part of WWE? They went yay or nay. So we don't have to go into a whole diatribe conversation about that. But simply put, guys, yay or nay? Is CM Punk good for the business now that he's back in WWE? For now, yes. I'll give it about a year. Maybe six months tops. Give me but, six months to a year. Uh, and I think it really comes down to how WrestleMania plays out. Because let's be honest here. If WrestleMania is not CM Pump or Seth Rollins for that title, 
was it going to be? Though, here's the thing. Um, there there are two reports that came out. One, a former WWE talent believes that they, they need to put CM Punk against Roman Reigns right now within six months because they feel like there's still that uncertainty ah. with Punk. And that's of course, the Roman still hates him. Give him. But um, second of all... to work with him. Yep. So that says something, guys. Continue. But there, the second thing that came out is that WWE is now optimistic we can get the Texas Rattlesnake versus the Straight Edge Society's former leader. I mean, we did get Kevin Owens versus Stone Cold during the Mania, so... But that was in Stone Cold's That was That was in Texas. Texas. We're in yeah, but, but, but still, hmm. But here's the thing. Could you imagine if WrestleMania 40 next year... Was to have The Rock, Stone Cold, on the same show. Honestly, Milestone WrestleMania. I wait, wait, wait. That. Play, play Limp Bizkit's My Way. Still the greatest, <laughs> Still the greatest video package song of all time. I don't yep. care what anyone tells me. All right. Well, anyway. Uh... But yeah, um, apparently people have mixed opinions on Punk's promo return. We can all understand that. Yeah, people yeah, wanted the, the punk the who was jaded, bitter, angry, and I'm just like, that was a guy from 10 to 15 years ago. Can we Can stop we looking back at the past? If CM Punk wants to truly try and start a new beginning in WWE, that could be his final ending. Let it be. And wait, wait, wait. Remember when what's that show from the Fox show backstage? The be backstage, yeah, yeah. Remember when all of those hosts were in WWE? Now they're in AEW, except for then... Yeah, who? except for who? Booker, Booker T. T. Booker T. And then CM Punk for a brief moment. Someone, someone put a screenshot out when you think about the authority era. I know, I'm sorry. 2013. There were four people at Triple H in that screenshot. There was Seth Rollins, only known as Seth Rollins at the time. There was CM Punk. There was Cody Rhodes and uh, what was the other one? What was the other one? Oh, Dub, Randy Orton. Oh, here yeah. If are, you know, here we are in 2023, guys, and Triple H runs the entire company, allegedly. And look who are four of you, the top guys right now that he works with. If you notice the roster that, that right now, it's it looks like we went back to SmackDown versus Raw days. It's trying to be like that. I, look, I'm, I'm just going to say this right now. WWE still is the most underwhelming thing for me as a fan of this business. I'm sorry. I am what I am. When I say I'm a fan of pro wrestling, I'm a fan of professional rats. I like that. I'm it. But I digress. But I will give credit where credit's due. Triple H has brought new life into the WWE product when it comes to who you see, the presentation, weekly, in ring, the PLEs. I think Triple H has done nothing but greater things for the WWE. I will not deny that. And the fact that he's trying to establish brand identity with two figureheads that know the business, the Nick Aldis and Adam Pierce, I think it will speak volumes for it as we look towards the outlook of WWE in 2024. What really needs to happen, though, to fully cement a reset, something has to finish. By WrestleMania 40. Otherwise, fuck this company. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we know. Also, also, so people were giving their thoughts on CM Punk's promo, like I mentioned. And people want, and like I said, people want him to be the CM Punk that was angry and bitter and hate filled. And I was just like 10 to 15 years ago, that guy should be dead by now in that in that personality mindset. But like, hopefully. People wanted him to bash AEW, and I was like, "He can't, he can't." He signed an NDA. Yes, not yeah, and I, and I and even Tony Khan, when people asked him, "Hey, what do you think about CM Punk going back to WWE?" Can't talk about that. Talk and about I was it. like, "Duh." Wait, and you, you remember, because, yeah, you you, you got to remember that people don't understand the fine line with these contractual obligations under disclosed agreements where you can't talk except, about another you, you company. Do you want to kicker about that comment, though? What? This was supposed to be a podcast radio show where they're promoting All In's tickets, and they just said, CM Punk, you want to talk about it? Hey, they want the clickbait. At the end of the day, what feeds the... What they feeds want their headline. They want their what, money. 
What fees yeah, is, and, what fees and, is the community of society? You can't talk base. about it. They went back to promoting all in yeah. and all that other stuff. What 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 feeds the stupidity of society and the self proclaiming net wrestling community? Clickbait talking about you, melts of the multiverse, Josh Mansfield. Anyway, uh, but, but wait, finally, wait. Tony Khan after three days recently came out with us with a talk about punk. All right. Nothing about him going to WWE. He he avoided that comment. He said this. The first dance was an incredible moment in wrestling. It was a very important time for AEW. He was saying this in a Zoom interview. All out 2021 with All In, our biggest pay-per-views of all time, and we've had a lot of great success as a company, as a team, and some of the most exciting times. CM Punk has been a big part of that team. There you go. And we move forward. Go ahead. Okay. Like, you're, yeah. you're, trying to, you're trying to say something. Go ahead. Oh, it- I was also going to say, um, AEW got a uh, record revenue, $175 million. And this company's dead. Anyway, go ahead, Lex. Remember when everyone... I've, who's that Megan Packett who left the AEW committee, right? She, Yeah, she was part of their uh, legal team, yes. Yeah. Tony Khan made the good decision on... Giving Daniel Brian Danielson the community power because remember, like he said, if anything turns to worse, Brian Danielson is the job for in case Tony Khan is MIA or something. And, and Brian Danielson is proven that, like, he's even you know said that he likes to be you know excited for future roles within AEW, and it seems like he wants to be an AEW full time, like, lifer. And he was th- as. As soon as his like uh full time wrestling ends. career ends, ends. full time is over. I, I, yeah. I see what you mean. Exactly. I have an update about Brian Danielson and the whole committee thing. Oh boy! Yes. So after it came out that Brian was part of the committee, that also agreed that recommended Tony Khan, and I must stress, recommended Tony Khan to fire Punk for what happened. A lot of people went ahead and, and attacked Brian for that, saying, "How could you do that? That was your best. That was one of your friends. You, you but, grew up together in the business." But sometimes was- decisions are not always popular. Y'all, you have to make the for right me, decision at the end of the day. Exactly. It's for me, here's the thing. thing. For me, this is, thing, this is business. This is business. Yeah, uh, but here's the thing: I did find out. What, I think one of the people who run Russell Puris came out and said. Punk's not even pissed at Brian for oh, that. Yeah. There you go. So why are you it's people not. on Brian's coat? T- why are you people on Brian's? I'm not going there. Get the fuck over yourself. Anyway, go ahead, Lex. The IWC loves to twist stories, so that's why you have to yeah. hear it from the peop- the people themselves to know if it's real or not. So that's and my we biggest don't work for right We don't work for WWE. We are not part of any legal accounts or any. Hidden watch along 24 7, watch them with a camera documentary for anybody in this business. It's all speculation until it comes straight from the horse's mouth themselves. Exactly. So at the end of the day, CM Punk, find the right way to end your career in the business. Don't fuck up anymore if you can't possibly. And let's just hope the best for both WWE and AEW because at the end of the day, you should want progression. Not dissension or disintegration. Oh, All right. Also, there's been an update on Serena Deeb. Uh, yeah, she shared her thing. Yeah, but yeah, I've seen so her on Instagram. Who so. was making accusations that she was just not being used or was having he can shut up now? Yeah, yeah. Y'all could definitely get, be get quiet over. about that, please. Yeah, get, get, get over yourself, people. And, and I'm just going to say this right now. Serena Deeb, nothing but love and more power to you. Please take care. All right, before we talk about uh, Connell Classic and, of course, other stuff regarding what we think might come in 2024 with some contracts that are up for a rubber new, let's just talk about a few other things real quick here. We know that uh, Kino is going to defend the uh, GH CMA Championship against former running mate of Congo, Manabu Soya, but Manabu Soya and Tatsumi Fujinami will face Kendall in a tag match prior. The World Tag League is going on right now in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Don't necessarily know who's going to win that yet, but that, of course, will determine who will take on Bishamon for the MW, uh, excuse me, IWGP uh, Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. And it's still anybody's race, I think, uh, at this point. Definitely some interesting uh, results so far. And, of course, in stardom, why we have to worry about now who will hold the uh, red belt. But Ryan continues to hold strong the uh, white belt. And Aphrodite, the returning, of course, Sayaka Matani and the Queen of Roses, Tommy Hayashita, 
They beat Megan Bain and Micah, poor Micah, for the Goddess of Stardom uh, Tag Team Championships. Asume, great match against Julia. Julia is still a W Strong Women's Champion. And that's currently what's going on right now is they got this four-woman tournament, the tournament who faces Susan Suzuki to tournament a new World of Stardom champion. And currently right now, the former World of Stardom champion, Siri, is testing herself under UWF rules against anybody possible, bringing blurring the lines of pro wrestling and MMA into stardom, which I think is very interesting. That Scandinavian hurricane competitor was quite a challenge, and I enjoyed what she brought. I wouldn't mind seeing Ronda Rousey take on Surrey, actually, under those rules, but that's a whole different conversation. Uh, Ring of Honor Final Battle is coming up, and as we know, it's a year-long storyline where we might see Billy Stars become the new Real Honor Women's World Champion as AEW and Ring of Honor figure going in both different directions going forward. And QT Marshall also left. I wish him uh, all the best, although I am curious to see what happens now with uh, Harley Cameron, Johnny Elite. Gotta be Johnny Elite now. Can't be Johnny. I mean, wait. When QT left, people people were like egging on him on when he got he left. But the talent from AEW went, says thank you, QT, and everyone. Even Cody Rhodes chimed in, and everyone. Yeah. And and because um, they, it's about I think creative differences because Tony Khan is a pro. Wants the it, it, he he's wants a, he's approach he's approaching AEW in a different creative uh, direction, and I think he wants it to be more on it. leaning to professional wrestling rather yeah, than man. sports Sport entertainment. entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Which, which makes me yeah, wonder again. I, I, the I, I didn't mention that the QT doesn't think New Japan tells stories, and I was like, <laughs> um, excuse me, have you seen like, the Omega versus Okada? Have That's you a seen story the list? The list can we can we can keep the list going? Saying, yeah, they're, 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 Kota Ibushi and Kenny Omega's love story. The Hiromu Takahashi and uh, Will Ospreay, of course, when he uh, came back after 512 days from a broken damn neck that we fought. Literally Omega and, and Jay White right. when Omega tried to recruit Jay White in the Bullet Club in his version of Bullet Club. Jay White and Okada literally Wrestle Kingdom 17 with the fact that Jay also, White and Okada Hiroshi, uh, also also you're all forgetting someone to Siri Naito's four year long distance. Yep. I was literally about to say that as we uh, also are, of course talked about uh, Wrestle Kingdom that continues to uh, form out and. Also, uh, NXT, they have NXT d- 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 deadline coming up. And I love the fact that Ela Dragunov and Ayla Valkyrie rule NXT right now. It feels like NXT, NXT UK. UK. Just NXT is not my NXT, but it's better than what it used to be. I admit that. I'm curious oh, yeah. to see sees that deadline. And that's just a little bit of a highlight regarding all things wrestling. Oh, and Pretty Empire still rules the NWA along with BC3. And we're approaching final uh, resolution before TNA uh, returns. And we know at least... Trinity will defend the Knockouts World Championship against Jordan Grace. And Moose will take a chance at Al Chile for the Impact World Oof. Championship. Other matches to be announced for Hard to Kill. All oh, right. Yeah, speaking of, oh, wait. Speaking of Dragon, have you seen that clip where he powerbombed Fraser and hit him with two, a three club ring elbows clubbing, to knock clubbing, him out? Well, clubbing shots. Yeah. I, I, I was I like, did what? That. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> it brought yeah. back the NXT UK Dragon of We All Know and Love. About damn time. Oh, All so right. Did, did, did Dragunov get his home invaded? I don't know. I think he's from Germany. Yeah. No, he no. Is. Like, I think they did a storyline that's somewhat similar to Hangman Swerve's moment, except there was no actual break. No, 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 no. His home, as far as I know, as far as the storyline goes, never got invaded. Oh wait, wait. I think it was because he brought the, his enemy brought up his family. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. He, now, now imagine if Dragonov was dealing yeah. with what Swerve did to Hangman. Imagine what Dragonov would have done. Well, Jesus also Christ! Imagine, imagine what they would have done off an, without an unscripted promo. Just saying. Uh, man, man. Of course, Hangman and Young Bucks, they haven't been seen since uh, AEW Full Gear. But what has been seen is what AEW has been doing lately in their different direction, and once again creating history, and once again being the leader of tournaments. Let's go ahead, and you can spearhead this one, King. Let's go ahead and talk about the first ever Continental Classic. It is AEW yeah. form of a G1 Climax, a round robin tournament taking place throughout all December that culminates at World's End and will crown the first ever American Triple Crown Champion as the Ring of Honor World Championship and the Strong Away Championship and the the Christian title will become one as this individual will be representing AEW, Ring of Honor, and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now, before we talk about what do we think this should be presented as and how it should be defended, let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to get there first. We have two blocks. Of course, we have the Gold League and the Blue League. 
and they are competing in round robin action where win gets them three points, draw gives them one, loss gives them four, and the matches are 20 minute time limits and all seconds, all allies are banned from ringside. So far, the entire tournament has been very well, strongly presented and held down. I respect that a lot. Here are the current standings. You can see for the Gold League, we have John Motsi and Spark Strickland leading the block. They are two for two. Why Roosh and Jay White are at three. And Mark Briscoe and Jay Lethal, two Ring of Honor, all-time greats, are at goose eggs. And the numbers, speak. what do they mean? Yeah, it's the numbers, Mason. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Wait, wait, wait. It, this is like bingo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone, was getting, someone on Twitter thought it was Wordle. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, I did see that comment. Yeah, and of course, the Blue League, which is more like a expectation block, being perfectly honest. It being is, led really. by all people. Brody King, why Brian Danielson, El Lilo, and Claudio Casnole have three points. Brian Danielson with a broken eye. The goose egg. So, guys. This is right now, in my opinion, one of the most unpredictable tournaments I've ever seen in my life in this industry. And it is Eddie Gunny's game. As we know, the winner of the gold faced the winner of the blue at the pay-per-view. But, of course, during the week up to World's End, the two top scores of the gold and the two top scores of the blue will face Char off one-on-one. With possible first-time-ever encounters ahead or repeated classics to come as we've probably seen in this tournament, Let's go ahead and break it down, get everybody's thoughts so far on this, and see if you guys have potentially a winner for each block or a winner overall. King, you literally been tracking this graphic by graphic, and so far I think we've covered each show that has had matches for it. Why don't you go ahead and give us your initial thoughts on this field, on the presentation. Do you have a winner for each block yet? And what's your expectation for the first ever AEW Triple Crown? As we're about to enter week three of the Continental Classic, these past two weeks have been nothing but bangers of matches that we have seen throughout the past couple of weeks. I mean, on Dynamite and on Collision both. I mean, we've had – we've got two top dogs in the Gold League of Moxley and Swerve, which either, either – it's like at this rate, it's between Mox or Swerve who's going to come out of the Gold League. That's my expectation of that because they're the top dogs of the Gold League. But, Mark, I feel like Mark Briscoe needs to find his uh, – uh, redneck kung fu within him or else um he out of there for sure jay lethal needs to find the old franchise jay lethal that we know him as as you know the franchise of ring of honor or is he gonna be done so he gonna be gone as well i have a feeling jay white gonna get one more win in him but it's gonna be the same as he was in the g1 he ain't gonna win it as my prediction, it's either going to be Mox or Swerve that's going to come out of the Gold League because the top dogs at the yard. And then in the Blue League, right now it's looking like it's Brody Key's league right now. I mean, he put away Eddie Kingston two weeks two weeks ago in that Born Burner made event with Eddie Kingston. And now last weekend, he put away um, Kyle Castanoli. Oh, Buddy Kyle Matthews Ke- was unable to do that. Exactly. And it's like you put away Eddie Kingston and you put away Claudio Castanelli, which, by the way, those are two Ring of Honor World Champions since Tony Khan's bought ROH. You have put away. Like, it's it's every time it's like Brody King's stock has gone up and up and up. And for the Blue League early prediction right now, and it might stick, I'm going away with Brody King to represent the Blue League. All right. Interesting uh, thoughts and initial uh, takeaways. And to your point right now, I also will just say this. For Collision, the house seems to always win. The House of Black is ruling Collision right now as Mm -hmm. we speak. Clean sweeps the past couple of weeks. And Julia Hart's crazy ass is challenging or calling out Conjure for the title. What the fuck? It's supposed to be once the blue moon Abaddon shows up, but they're going beyond it. Yeah, well, I mean, Sky right. Blue already talked. Well, well, Sky Blue is challenging Timeless Toy Storm this Wednesday in Montreal. Let's also put that out there. And also in Montreal, you got Adam Coben versus Christian Cage for the TNT Championship, along with the Continental Classic. I'm just saying. And then Collision, you got Kenny Omega versus Ethan Page, also in Canada. Just saying. Casey's not here to sing the Canadian National Anthem, but I feel like he would have a feel. Oh, my right God. <laughs> God. <laughs> Yeah, that's for you, preacher man. No, oh, no, not copyright. Anyway, <laughs> Eric, what's your thoughts on the uh, Continental Classic and this idea of a, a triple crown? Again, we have not heard of a triple crown since all Japan for wrestling merged the NWA and the AJPW and the 
UPF uh, titles in their own right. That's now held by Kazuhiko Nakajima. And it's one of the most prestigious titles in all professional wrestling. And we know Tony Khan is a legacy guy. He honors legacy. He respects history. And he seems to like to recreate it now here on, on the Western front. So what's your take on the uh, Kano Classic so far? And do you have an early pick for each block or an early winner overall? Graphs. Yes. I give, gra- I give graphs. 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 <laughs> I give you both grass. <laughs> Go ahead. Numbers. What do they mean? <laughs> Seriously, what was going on with everyone trying to dunk on this? Because it's it, it it's around Robin tournament. It's it's around Robin tournament. People are are not used to that. Even JJ was confused because let's 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 be honest here, guys. Up to this point, Ada has only done single elimination tournaments this is a first for them and it's and like i was saying they're getting like a uh, me like you no know, we talked about when our watch along last week there I, I feel like tony is transitioning into a new japan pro wrestling style in 2024 and we're just seeing you know bits of it yeah as we but, speak. But it also kind of proves more than ever that the ones who were saying we watch new japan liar yeah, <laughs> you're a liar. <laughs> yeah. I feel insulted by your lie as a guy that watches all things wrestling. You depend for I sense bullshit. <laughs> and I, I still recall before New Japan got stardom, uh, Bushi Robot got stardom. Someone actually said, "How oh, imagine Bailey and Sasha Banks in New Japan." You didn't even really watch it, do you? Yeah. No, they, they, they don't. They, <laughs> they, they, they want to forbid it. And there was rumor that New Japan would partner with WWE, even though that was not true. No. I mean, they tried the All Japan Pro Wrestling thing a while back, and that went belly up. Nope. <laughs> yeah, but, but like as for the as for the Continental Classic, I'm lo- I'm loving it. Uh, Swerve Strickland beat Jay White. I think we I think we know he has a huge chance of winning, especially with. The I, told no one, I, t- I told no one. I told no one on Wednesday. I thought I was going to be our first draw, but I was yeah, so I, wrong. I, I actually, yeah, actually, you were. Uh, a, a lot of people on Twitter were saying they should have went for a draw. I, 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 again, Jay White now has lost against the AEW World Champion for the title. Now he lost to Swerve Strickland after Swerve went through a death match in yes. the Continental Classic. Yes. Just saying. Continue. So now I'm curious as to know where they're going to take this. Also, Roos almost got hurt, apparently, fighting Mark Briscoe. Why am yep. I surprised with how intense that crazy Those two bit. were in. That wasn't, a, that wasn't a, like, a wrestling match. That was a brawl. That, that was, was a, a fight. fight. That was a straight up fight. Yeah. Yep. And, and then we got the Gold League with Brian Danielson, One Eye Brian. Blue League, by the way. Botch. But yeah. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. But like, yeah. One Eye Brian is insane as always and is trying his best to say, okay, honey, I know I promised this stuff, but <laughs> we I go. can't stop. <laughs> Let's that man, the wrestling context, Eric. All right? That man, I mean, Brian Danielson lives, reads, and sleeps and eats professional wrestling for breakfast. Damn it. Have you seen his promo that he cut on the AEW's U- I mean, uh, Twitter page of him meditating? meditating? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He leaves and breathes his stuff. There's a reason why Regal called him the perfect wrestler, despite the fact he is way less than 100%. And he has a match against Okada next month. <laughs> Don't remind us. So, hell yeah. yeah. That's we'll talk but about yeah, that if, a if you were to make me guess what's going to happen for the finale, I always think Swerve or John Moxley's got this. And whoever, and while well, Brody King's in the lead, I get the feeling Brian's going to pull a fast one. Well, mm. again, Brian just had his mm. first match, and he still has Brody Keen to come up. Honestly, because, right? because um, remember Jeff Cobb, as much as I wish he did win that G One Climax years back. Get it? Yeah. Uh, he yeah. was undefeated, but one match threw him out of it, and it was against the Rainmaker. Yep. I still yeah. think he should have won the G One. That 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 would have been an interesting dynamic to see Jeff Cobb, the rising stardom, against his boss Will Osprey. As he was the champion at the time. Well, well, oh, yeah. Craig, he, speaking he of them, they, speaking of both of them, they faced in Ring of Honor before for the television championship. That's right. Remember, yeah, that's right. he won Supercard 2019, where, of course, Jeff Cobb won both championships that night. 
And he came in as the undefeated Rear Artillery Champion. Oh, by the way, how would I forget? The Rear Artillery Champion is being determined now by a Survivor of the Fittest Tournament. No idea who's winning that. As the Rear Bar Five Out pay view has two matches right now, but. And it's next week. They'll pull a fast oh, one again. They're going, they'll pull a fast one like Tony did last time. And it, all of a sudden, people go, oh, this and this and this. And then all of a sudden, oh, we like the pay per view. We like the pay per view. A double standard, oh, as my. always. That we love oh, man. Anyway. Uh, but um, <clears throat> Brody King honestly surprised me. I thought for sure he was going to be. I, I figured he was going to be a breakout star in this show. But I didn't think it would be like defeating world champ Eddie Kingston. All right, and, and then former world champ Claudio Castagnoli too. At least, at least like, I, I can believe Brody King could defeat Claudio since, well, Claudio's kind of in limbo for a little bit. That's like fair. he's still doing good That's matches, fair. but like Eddie Kingston losing to him first is like, well, at least Tony Khan stopped you from losing the belts. Yeah, I was say, I mean, he's basically defending that those titles whip every match here because again, the winner's yeah, gonna get. But the, the um, if you were to tell me who's gonna win this tournament, I want to say Swerve Strickland. Ooh, especially hot take. Yeah, yeah, especially really since Swerve has been on this insane momentum. But I feel like Swerve is more of a right now, and I know it's going to keep rising, a main event player. Yeah. So except, here's the thing. Here, here's here's something that someone actually asked me. Okay, if someone said this. It's like he he he's getting he's there. He he's in the main event scene. But it's like, is he ready for to run with the world title? Because some people have argued about his promo game. Like he has some hits and, and some misses. Right. Well, I, yeah, and I get that as far and, as and they feel like they should wait till like near the end of 2024 to give him the run with the world belt instead of. Right now, but I'm just going to throw this out there. His theme was playing in Jacksonville State, where Tony Khan and his uh father Shahi owned the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they yeah, were playing I, I in the that. Monday Night Football it's game. Like, I'm just saying, but like he he technically will be a world champion if he wins this because the ROH title and the Andrew Strawboy title and the Continental title again, the champion's going to be presenting this triple crown and defending it. Yeah, the, so Swerve would have a huge wrestling. amount of momentum, and when he eventually drops those three belts, or if they're one belt, uh, then he can move on to the world title. It, it, well, I mean, at this point, though, you're carving your own legacy with this championship, though, and it allows you to work with three different companies. So, I mean, again, it almost feels like a bigger crown than just the AEW World Championship, we're being perfectly honest here. But, yeah, though, though that raises a question. Uh, if Swerve wins the strong title, it w- wins the wins this whole thing, and it has the has an IWGP belt. I was thinking, oh god, imagine him him fighting in the G one. I wouldn't rule it out. I'm just saying. The, 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 and I, and I, I'm just gonna call Ace of Spades here. The biggest reason Tony Khan did this, you all knew what Brian Danielson wanted to do when he came back to professional wrestling. Damn it, he wanted to participate in a G1. Yep. Yeah. Also, exactly. um, I'm just gonna say this. Two things. Uh, okay. <laughs> what? What if? What if they make a pay per view dedicating to Brian as his career nears his end? Final I want to rule it out. I would rule Final it out. Final countdown. That that could be one. But here's another thing. AW can win both with this. They can have a pay per view themed after Brian, but also get some sweet sponsorship money. The Dance of the Dragons. Oh gosh. We get money off of Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, and we get to honor Brian. It's win win. And again, you're not going to get anything if that becomes a, a thing. I'm just going to put that out there right you're now. You're not going to get yeah. But 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 but, but to, his, <laughs> to, to his point, KG Mudo retired this year, and the show was KG Mudo's last love, and literally that was a culmination of all things oh, when it came to the art. Except for the, the fact that uh, Mudo, except for Mudo trying to do a moonsault st- until Tanahashi stopped them. But I digress. Well, hey, I mean, speaking <laughs> speaking of KG Mudo. He finally gave birth to the kid. He has a kid now. The, the, oh, yeah. He, after the mess. Oh, it's thing. grown up now. It just grew it's up. Grew- it had a rapid accelerating aging process. Oh. Is, 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 what, what, is, think, what is Great Muda doing here? This, 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 this confuses me even more, all right? Because the, the right. daughter appeared in the wrestling show and just misted someone. Of course she did. Mm. 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, a, a new dark force born soon to come to our television screens and pro wrestling. No, if I have to guess, but oh, uh, that... oh, so, um, let's see if I can remember this. Um, beyond the whole Brian Nelson pay per view, like we knew Brian wanted this. Also, I, I'm gonna just say this. I have completely forgotten that Nido was the G1 winner. Damn. You know what, though? That's kind of fair. because of I completely forgot, too, if I'm being honest yeah, with you. Yeah, I was like, wait, Nido's the... Oh, yeah, Nido is the G1 yeah, certificate yeah. holder. How the heck do you make that forgettable? Right. Uh, you, host, you host two tag tournaments back-to-back. Oh, yeah. That's wait, has he even defended it? Yeah, he did at Power. No, not at Power Show. He defended at the uh, Destruction against the. Uh, who he defended against? Damn. How long ago was that? That was in October. And yet, I have no recollection of that happening. Me neither. Not at yeah, all. Same. They're, they're trying to figure out the match. I, 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 I can't figure it either. Uh, anyway. Okay, uh, Lex, what's your thoughts on the uh, Carnell Classic? What's your uh, top go-to winner for a blue and gold versus? And who do you think deserves to win the whole thing over on? Have you enjoyed this tournament? I enjoy this tournament, but I can't wait for Claudio versus Eddie 3. Oh, oh yeah. Yep, that is coming up this week. Yep, I forgot. Yep, it is coming up this week. Along with uh, the crazy... Oh, he fought Jeff Cobb. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's right. Thank you, Jeff Cobb. Poor Jeff Cobb. Damn it. For me, I would go eat. Um, I would run it back with, uh, Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland. Hmm. Mm. Well, considering their last match came out with shenanigans. I consider that but, Eric but, saying but, that Brian might this, pull a fast one. But this one, this one, I think for me, the whole entire tournament, I want Brian Danielson to win it, since he. He, he is, he is part of this tournament, and he said he cannot compete in the G one climax since it's his time is limited. So, for me, him to win this, it's gonna be big for him. Yeah, the Nadia McGee is facing for it. Could yeah, but then Brian's schedule is gonna be tripled. <laughs> Yeah, because he's got to wrestle. And, and knowing, knowing the madman, he's going to do it all the way up to his final match. And I'm calling it right now. If his final match is not at AEW All in Webley Stadium next year and he doesn't come out the final countdown, Tony Khan, you're fucked up. But that also means you got to have Amy Sakura get her queen. Uh, we will rock you as well. And do her versus Soraya. There you go. See, it's, not, it's not hard to book. It's just... It's not even hard to finance. This dude's got the second biggest fucking wallet in the freaking industry. Damn it. He does. God. Anyway. Yeah, I, again, I, I'm torn on this. First off, John Moxley, again, between his problems being sick and tired, mentally and physically tired, kind of like I am right now. Jesus Christ. Uh, freaking only doing the one thing he knows how to do with that, and that's wrestle like, like he never well, wrestled. I, I have an update on Brian. Uh-oh. Oh, but, boy. Please don't tell me he's more brittle. I bet well, you. He no, is. no, no. He, he's well. Well, he'll probably be when he's in his seventies because he said he wants to wrestle until he's seventy-four. Oh, of course. Continue. However, he did said in an interview on the Maggie and Perloff show uh, that he does plan to continue wrestling beyond twenty twenty-four, just not the full-time level he was doing. Okay, so he's not. He full- said. He said. So he's not doing full-time, but he's going to be doing part-time. Yeah, he said oh, that he God. would stop full time when his daughter turned seven, but he's still actively going to be involved in wrestling. That's good. As, as basically a Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar type. So basically, he's going to renew his contract. Got it. Well, at least he's not holding a title hostage. But anyway, that's all. Oh, yeah, my God. And, and, Sorry, and I said that out loud. Not wrong. And Brian even said, uh, yeah, I mean, I can see myself out there at 74. Just oh, be like, ah, oh, come on. Saying it's one of his life's passions. I mean, Sting is doing it at 64. I mean, we want to roll that out. Sting, he's done next year. Showtime for the last time is next year in March at Revolution. Let's go. We want to roll it out. One last woo in the sunset. Also, uh, we we actually forgot a major thing to talk about. What? What? 
Will Osprey's all elite. Oh my gosh! I well, dare yeah, shame well, you all. No, we talk about contrast. We did talk about it earlier, and that was a moment. We're talking about people that we think, okay, maybe they're better here, maybe they're better there, maybe they're better here. But of course, before all that, to your point, Eric, and to your point, Lex. By the way, have a great time there live. We have yep. Wrestle Kingdom, and of course, Will Osprey will be going after a brand new championship, IWGP, currently named still the UK Championship, against John Moxley, David Finley. Think about this, guys. If John Moxley wins this, that title goes into the Tokyo Dome. What if this becomes a winner-take-all scenario? Will Osprey gets the goal of the title he's working looking for in the Triple Crown before he's in AEW. If Brian Danielson wins this, and if Okada going in a different direction, what if Okada gets his win back and he becomes the first ever Triple Crown at the Tokyo Dome? You literally might be booking the Triple Crown winner at Tokyo Dome or seen it presented there. And JJ made a very good point, as he usually does. The Triple Crown should be at the biggest shows possible. It's going to be presenting both Ring of Honor, New Japan, and AEW. AEW defines it at AEW World's End, AEW Pay-Per-View. The NJPW side defines it first and presents it at Wrestle Kingdom, the biggest show of New Japan Pro Wrestling's calendar year, we're being perfectly honest. And as far as freaking Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, you defend it right there with Finn, maybe made a bet. It has to be the main event because he's got the Ring of World Championship. Yep. I feel like if Tony Khan doesn't do that with this Triple Crown, he's already got a bad start. But it comes to down who is the one you use to present it. And based on this Wrestle Kingdom card, you literally might be looking at somebody that could be presenting it. So put that yeah. perspective, guys. So anyways, how do you feel that David Finley just took away Moxley versus Osprey? Okay, King, go ahead and talk real quick before we talk a little about Wrestle Kingdom. Then we're going to talk about contract talks before we uh, conclude. I'm, 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 I'm just going to keep it short and brief and I'm simple. And I can't believe I'm repeating this like I'm beating a dead horse. But here we go. Um, why in the world is this knockoff Jay White fake leader of Bullet Club War Dogs or whatever you call it, Bullet Club Dojo, Bullet Club this, Bullet Club that, Bullet not Club my bull, not my Bullet Club, but you ah! have a ungenerational, not generational, ungenerational talent leading Bullet Club, the legacy of Bullet Club, into in a dog water state of Bullet Club Dojo people and basically just tarnishing this legacy and then you want to insert yourself into what it should be one-on-one -on -one between the aerial assassin and the death rider and you just insert it yourself in here like, oh, I'm hey, I, I'm ungenerational talent. My name is David Finley. I like to insert myself into this triple threat. And just make the match. You just basically, like, why? King, why? King, King, I'm just going to ask you something real, real important. Go ahead. What if David Finley, since Osprey signed, what if David Finley stacks both Mox and Osprey like Roman did to Edge and Brian? You will not hear from me for the next. That will be the weeks. death of New Japan for years to come. All right, guys. Maybe, maybe, we're, maybe we're being a little bit extreme here with that result. It is triple frat after all, and anything goes. And I don't think they would do something like that. But you also got to see David Finley. He could use this to his advantage. And to Eric's point, David Finley is contractedly signed to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Also, but, I got another question. Um, what if they yeah. just mess up the match completely and just have Bullet Club get involved since they are legally allowed to? Since this is uh, a it, and this also this is Gato, it, and also this is Gato's booking too. So I say Gato is the booker for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Even Rock Romero is the guy spearheading the Forbidden Door, but I digress. And that being said, of course, we also know this is the card case folks are wondering what is currently right now, as we still determine the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champion Challengers to Bishamon. We have the IWGP Heavyweight Championship on the line with uh, Elder Sprout. They'll finally get it done with a fully active audio audience, unlike Wrestle Kingdom 16, where Elder Sprout got the better up for Realm of Cells. Should be a great match. Uh, again, we got Tama Tonga going after the Never Witch Championship against Shingo Takagi. I still think it should be Jeff Cobb, but that's a whole different conversation. And we also have the Ace in New Japan taking on Zack Sabre Jr. for the Ninja World Television Championship to catch him with a neck cradle. And again, that might be all the Ace needs. You don't count out the Ace. Again, he still owns the freaking lease on the Tokyo, don't be perfectly honest. And as we oh. talked about, Tetsuya Naito, four-year, Dustino. Will it finally be accomplished, or is this truly his last chance, and is it just adios? Oh, and Brian Danielson takes on Okada once again and looks to take away his Rainmaker. I'll make sure he never does Part the Rainmaker two. again. 
<laughs> this this is gonna be a ridiculous Wrestle Kingdom, but I'm looking very forward. To also, it. two things. Um, one, uh, King, I, I have another question. What oh, if? Okay, not what if. Uh, guess what? Guess so. Guess what? Someone said to, to Will Osprey. What? That they are a quote better entertainer than them. Entertainer. That's a big entertainer term. than them. Entertainer. Not Matt Menard. I guarantee you that. I it guess you said it. It would be funny if he said it. Who? The Road Dog, Jesse James. Well, if you didn't know, you know. But his time also far past. Yep. Yeah. Also, um, okay. Yes. Road Dog. Yes. Okay. Road Dog. Say that just made me laugh. Like it was like. Okay, come on. I know you're mad that he didn't sign with WWE, but come on. At the end of the day, it is what it is. It, it's best for your family and your situation at the end of the day. And, and that's all that, that matters. You should be happy for him. You should be happy for the talent. Again, don't put your support in this industry into one damn company with the biggest wallet. Oh, also, Noah, remember, you're going to have a busy 24 to 48 hours that day when Wrestle Kingdom airs. Yeah, I already know that. Heck, it, it could probably be 72 hours if, if, w, if WWE does a special NXT episode. You realize I'm already calling all this next year, right? Yes. Good lord. Yeah, we know. Including what's left for this month, starting this Friday with Tribute to the Truth and Saturday, I'm calling NXT dit, 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 Deadline but, uh, and Power Delusion Bad no, Bad. no, you know what Brian's going to try and do. What? You know what Brian's going to eventually try and do with Wrestle Kingdom? Uh, okay, Brian's going to go there, fly, going to go there, fly all the way to Japan, fight Okada, kick his effing head in, and then he's going to call Tony Khan and say, "Look, uh, I, I, I got the earliest flight. If I can, I think I can make it to Dynamite. I know I'll be jet lagged, but I will do this." Uh, I, I expect Brian to do that 110. percent You kidding me? I, I mean, I wouldn't surprise me at all. Again, he's a freaking madman. He's, <laughs> but anyway, that's all. That 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 that's a conversation that doesn't need to be a conversation. But let's go ahead and talk about this conversation book before we talk about contracts. AEW World's End Industry Reshaping begins again, guys. Does the devil reveal himself? Isn't it known that Samoa Joe will take the towel from MJF? Uh, at the end of the day, guys, what happens at World's End before we truly begin again? Let's talk a little bit about this devil narrative. Adam Cole, Britt Baker, The Kingdom, David Finley, Bullet Club, Sammy Callahan, the names, the speculation galore, the wildest circumstances, Jack Perry, Hook. It, it's one of those things where we truly don't know who the devil is, and isn't a double standard. Isn't really a MJF why Warlow wants to take everything the devil uh, took from him with interest. So let's talk about that. This narrative we're, we're talking about, you know, AEW trying to be less storytelling. This has been the biggest story of AEW this year in quite a long time, and it's still right now is completely up in the air. We know that this Wednesday will be MJF Samoa Joe taking on two of the devil's goons, two of the four goons. Remember, it's four goons. And the devil himself. We know one of those goons has a baseball bat. But I digress. So let's talk about this narrative real quick. Alex, you've been pretty quiet here. But again, you've been trying to catch up. And you know about this whole uh, devil narrative uh, going on. It's not Yakuza led by Kota Ibushi, as far as we know. Because he's going to be wrestling Fuji on January 2nd. But what's your take on this narrative? And do you think that uh, the devil shows his true identity at World's End? You don't have to necessarily predict about MJF versus Samoa Joe for the championship. We'll do that during the last Wednesday of the for year. For me, I think the devil will finally be revealed at World's End. Because the name of the title says World's End, of course. It's not finals, by the way, folks. Get that out of your head. It's not the end of the world, but it is end of 2023, World's End. Well, either way, I'll feel fine. So there's that. But yeah, I'm excited for for World's End because that that storyline, what happened during Dynamite, right? MJ MJF almost got beat the living crap of the devil henchmen, and then they did the Undertale thing with the with the text. Yes, which caught which caught me a little off guard a little bit because it's like. Yeah, go ahead. Are you are you a hero, Max? And then um, I love when MJF broke the cane. It's like, I'm walking fine, you bitch. <laughs> That's like, 
And adrenaline makes a man does crazy things. But also, it's like, ooh, ooh, like freaking Sans or whatever. And you can't make dressed up as Sans. But, but yeah, that, that, that did take me back because it's like, okay. And apparently, commentary was hacked. They couldn't say or do anything during this entire segment. Also, there's something else so important out about Adam Cole's promo with Brian, with, uh, with, with MJF and Samoa Joe. Go for it. They noticed that Adam Cole's hand reached behind his pocket and he moved his hand like he clicked something. When he was yeah, sitting I there. saw that. But, but I also did notice, and I was looking on Drainmaker's Twitter, and I remember yeah, Maker, that, yeah. I remember um, the uh, text that was saying, will you be a hero uh, on Wednesday, Max, and I took me back, and I took me, and I did some, you know, conspiracy theory, and I said, "Hero, wait a minute. What was the jacket that Adam Cole wore it all in? What was the back of that word said on his jacket?" Well, considering he's a Halo fan, I mean, it said "Hero." It said "Hero," and it dun, said on dun, the text, dun. "Will you be a hero?" On Wednesday, Max. The funny thing is, it asked, will you be a hero? It didn't ask, or. It didn't ask an alternative identity. Which also is another thing, because, let's be honest, he may be our scumbag, but MJF has still been the double of AEW as long as we've known him. Wait, this reminds me of the, the meme from It's it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where the, the board the board meme, where like, the conspiracy theory is like, that's that's us wondering well, who's but, the but, devil, but, who's it, the yeah. devil. We're like, it's, not like, it's not like you get Jesse the body venture on the case. <laughs> Imagine that character trying to I solve mean, it. I it, mean, it would be it would be okay. I'm not gonna be okay. Sorry for being gonna be offensive in this one. The devil is too small for MJF because Adam Cole is small. I about to say, I, 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 and plus. Yeah. That tag match on Wednesday, we'll figure out who the goons are be- just by how they wrestle. Say, I think we're going to get the goons unmasked a bit by yeah, bit. Yeah, about to say, about to say, I don't know if we're going to get their identity before they're unmasked, but you're figuring the ring style might get yeah, their st- yep. idea. Look, so exactly. long as they're wearing goofy I think, masks with stupid code names, I'm all right with it. I think my, my only theory for this one, I think the kingdom is behind the... That's what my safe bet is, is the kingdom. Yeah, with that false next strong liar in the wheelchair. Hey, hey, you don't disrespect next strong. The next strong, oh, next the halls. He's a bigger crook than Christian Cage. <laughs> no, that's Amer- that, is, that is America's father of the year, okay? Wait, wait, wait. That is father Roger of the year. Let their own illegitimate son eat a concerto. Whose wait, wait. father wishes to have their son concerto another mother? Wait, save Christian Cage for Father's Day next year. <laughs> oh god if his TNT tower goes that long then they've already fucked up with this championship <laughs> but seriously anyway. I, can't wa- I can't wait for Adam Copeland versus Christian oh yeah me, me, me too I'm, I'm, all, uh, I, I, I'm calling it now calling it now it haven't happened yet during Christian Cage's right it hasn't happened in a while I'm calling it now not just shenanigans I'm calling it now draw because remember yep. TNT championship matches on TV go to 20 minutes yeah, I'm calling it too. It's gonna to be a draw, and we're gonna get the be. conclusion at World's End. It's gonna be a chairs match, or it's gonna be TLC. But, he, but yeah, um, I I I keep thinking Sammy Callahan is one of the goons because of that baseball bat. And Same. He's known for, with that, wrestler revolver, pro wrestler revolver. He works with John Moxley, switch brands. He also has worked with several talents in AEW. Anyway, and he's a free agent. Yeah. That too. Oh, oh, but though here's another theory some people could have thrown out. Who? Try. What if it's the recently released MLW Mega Star? Rich Holiday. Richard yeah. Holiday. Uh, again, he was in MJF's shadow as Dynasty. And you realize who MJF's girlfriend is right now, right? Oh, yeah. should tell. Yeah. Former running master <laughs> with Rich Oh, Holiday. my God. Yeah, yeah, but also, also I was thinking, uh, but yeah, when I was thinking, of, I was also thinking Alexander Hammerstone being the big guy. I say I don't know if that guy is as big as him. Alexander Hammerstone's a beast. Yep, yeah, he but is. like I, I was thinking this. 
if it's one of MJF's past people he worked with in MLW, then I'm going to be like, okay, he can be one of the goons, but he can't be the devil. It has to be a major payoff. And again, at this point, the devil has to be as big as a holy S moment to match up against MJF. Clearly, for whether well, the championship or not, I'm just going to put the championship out there as the centerpiece. At for this me, point, if, um... if it's not Jack Perry... Who else has that connectivity to MJF where it doesn't like, you know, go over like a wet fart in church? Wardlow. Wardlow's too big, and Wardlow's already made his attention known. So it's okay. not Wardlow. Wardlow's not Wardlow's not. Jack Perry's underwhelming. Possibly yeah. MJF's uh, other past compadres could be in the devil moniker. I know someone said Sammy Guevara, of course. Oh, by the way, congratulations to Sammy and Ty on the birth of their uh, new daughter. Congratulations Baby girl. to them. I love, I love that. I love, love seeing that. Uh, I know someone also put out Pac, but I bet he's been facing DC issues or injuries for, like, for the long... And Pac's been MIA for the longest time. Not only just because of injury, but because the visa system sucks. Well, yeah, but that's a whole different conversation. I mean... Also, wait, wait, wait. I mean, Pac, Pac could be... An interesting character for the devil, but he's but nah, he's a bastard. <laughs> oh, so I don't think he's ever interacted with MJF. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. And what what would be what would be like his motive also at this point too? He's right, the championship. And again, just... right now the inevitable might be Samoa Joe because let's be honest, guys, MJF's going in here banged up worse than ever. I'm still yeah, sticking with my safe bet. I'm still wrong. sticking with Cole. Yeah, I, I feel like this might be if NJF's towel reign. He can try as much as he wants, but they're going to tell him, look, you have a torn labrum. We learned our lesson already. We, well, we haven't, but with Adam Cole, baby, we already know that history. I was saying. And, 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 this is, and this is the thing. I keep once again bringing this up. Why is this a trend now? Cody, Ridge Holland, Kenny Omega, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens all say, oh, yeah, we're banged up. We're horribly, horribly injured. We'll probably be crippled by the time we're in, in about a year or so. But we're going to keep doing this until the wheels fall off. One of us. One of us. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Speaking, speaking of MJF, I'm excited for the movie The Iron Claw. Yeah, yeah exactly in, that. in that as well. And to Eric's point, I think we talked about this on previous views. I talked about it with JJ. Since Cody Rose did that tour pectoral muscle 30 minute match in the Red Crab Eight last year, he set the standard. Well, to be fair, Kenny Omega started off first because, you know, he was holding three world titles across multiple promotions. Well. Yeah, Vertigo yeah. and all the other issues he's been carrying on his medical for, for, history. Think about that. I'm still bringing this up today. Uh, imagine Kenny Omega wrestling with Vertigo, holding the IWGP World Top, holding the IWGP Heavyweight Belt, then holding the IWGP US Belt, then holding the the AEW World Belt, the Tag Team Belts, then holding the R the uh, Impact World Belts, and the and the AAA Mega Championship. Yeah, again, he he's a wrestler beyond on a different uh, level of uh, physicality and maturity, for being perfectly honest, and mentality. So, and, oh, and again, also, I, someone did bring up the idea that it could also be Gorgon, who was part of NGF's dynasty group, as fair, the but, big guy. But how many people in AEW are going to recognize that? You want this reveal to be no, no not name. the devil, not the devil as one of the goons. Oh, oh the okay. goons. Well, that, that, that's more of a realistic possibility than uh, yeah, uh, like 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 someone mentioned, like it could be the people of the dynasty faction. Like the only one that would be quote good enough would be Alexander Hammerstone being the the being part of the group. And Kyle O'Reilly, he's nowhere near ready to come back yet, as far as I know. It's like he can't be a goon. Yeah, and um. Someone also mentioned Anna Blake being the female being 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 part of the group because she was the valet for the dynasty. Yes, she was. Yeah. Of course, AEW just signed the most recent newest member to their female roster and former Star on Tag Team Champion, the Glamour Mariah May, who went to Tony Khan's office last week, but we haven't heard any aftermath from oh, that meeting. Yet. Heard, Dynamite. It's been said she's been set. Dynamite. She's Dynamite. Actually, it's been reported she's set for a major push next year. Ooh. What? She said Mariah May. Ooh. She 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 could uh, um Mariah May versus uh Jamie Hater. Bring it, Tony. Bring it. I'm a hater. 
I wouldn't mind seeing that. I'm not going to lie. Again, she hung with Julia. She beat uh, Mina Shirakawa, leader of Club Venus. Let's see. She had 99 matches within nine months. I mean, I'm just saying. Mariah May is somebody to watch out for. But again, this comes down to one thing that needs to change going into 2020. The booking. Book your women's division better. Damn it. Amen. Amen. Anyway. All right, but yeah, I think Adam Cole right now just has to be the front runner. It just feels like it should be Adam Cole in the kingdom. And let's not forget, even after I put it out, yes, you once led your kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy king's rule carried out. All right, it just feels like it's but, for itself. It, it really does. But is that kingdom going to be undisputed? That I don't know. Though, also, what if it's a combination like Undisputed Era, The Kingdom, and Dynasty? Like, mem- oh, like a sorry, member of you- That's a super group. Well, what sort of name do you give that? The Dynastically? Really? That's a real yeah. word. Uh, let, let, me, let me just pull up. It, it, I say, look it up because I've never heard of that word before. I've never heard of that word in my life. That almost sounds like just three words. <laughs> Merged together, together, like I didn't know it was I mean, a real word. When Osprey decided to build the empire, it was just called the Empire back at Rescue the 15. Then it got the United Way. Well, it's, it's, it's a similar name for Dynasty. It's a similar name for Dynasty. Hmm. Yeah, but dynastically is like if something it it has to do with rulers or leaders who inherit their position of power. A dynastic business is run by a successive generation of the same family. Yada yada yada. But one of the other things is mentioning, uh, if I cor- if I'm correct about this, uh, when the last time I read it, is that it also relates to a mission. Well, the damn cold behind this whole thing, this certainly has been one hell of a mission since AEW All In. If that truly is the case, and it just adds more mm-hmm. uh, value to the merit. So again, World's End, it might be MJF End, and it might be Phantom Cole, a new undisputed beginning. Of a very unique reign to happen in AEW before this bidding were in 2024. But only time will tell, guys. We keep on tying down the days. And I think Wednesday is going to give a lot more foreshadowing whether MGF will survive Samoa Joe and hold on to the gold. And whether the devil's ugly face will be foretold. Yep. All right. Well, that being said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, contracts and the industry as we talk about 2024. I mean, you already brought up a couple of names right there with uh, Kala, Kata, and Camille. I know I've talked about the book, also. Long day. Diana uh, Perazzo. I know that we've talked about, okay, what are they going to do as far as reshaping uh, AEW? Focus on you know, the younger town within. Do they need to bring somebody else in? I mean, you set that graphic here about how many people they got under 30. When it comes to that, and NXT, for what it's worth, they got a lot of people under third. They're trying to create into the next superstars, the next generation. Uh, good luck with that. I see five so far. Uh, and then, of course, we're talking about reshaping the Japanese landscape with New Japan and Noah, and who knows what the frick else in stardom right now. You got Julia, you got Mercedes Monet that's still up in the air right now. She becomes fully all leap, but Bailey wants to see her back. If Bailey's excommunicated from damage control, maybe that's how they try and bring Bailey back as baby phase and have. Barely in such a Banks tag team again. Yeah, let's see how far that goes. Towards WrestleMania, there, there's a lot of unknown expectation. And also bring up Bonner, Billy Stars, bring up our world, world, world champion, Athena. What does she do after that? If she loses, that's all another thing. Katsura Shibata might be going back to Japan. Maybe that's why he lost the pure championship to Yuda because of how long he held that. There's a lot of speculation. So I, I just want to get your spots, whether it's company or person or something you might see. I know we'll get more into this as we talk about our vision at 2024. Oh, um, before you bring that up, I just year. want to mention. What? Um, according to Dave Meltzer, take it with a grain of salt as you can. Oh, God. Here we go. That guy. The plan is apparently set to have Tony Storm and Maria May eventually feud for the world title. I kind of saw that coming, to be fair, because that's literally stardom vibes right there. Former stardom world champion, SWA women's world champion. No, former they, 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 they able to use certain words that when I heard this, I was like, you have to be honest. You have to be right about this or they'll call you out. They're saying that they want to make that program between Maria May and Mariah May and Tony Storm to be a featured program on AEW TV. And I was like, prove it. Yeah, about to say. Yeah, prove it. What What's the number one criticism of AEW that we got? Look at the women's, women's division. 
Exactly. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. I, I someone said AEW needs to respond. Uh, so, so I've been seeing people saying AEW needs to respond to Punk's going to WWE, and I was like, and one of my ideas was like, make the women's division a cornerstone of the company. No. Well, I tried. I mean, again, I said that we talk about the potential all the time. There, I mean, Abaddon. Who would have thought you get Abaddon versus uh, Julia Hart tease for the TBS Championship? Who would have thought we'd get Abaddon oh, twice? Showed up at- also, did you hear that Kiss uh, had their final Kiss show? Oh, the band Kiss? Band. Yeah, they had their final show. Oh wow, damn! Retirement Maybe. show, I think, right? Yeah. Well, From guess who like was? Uh, guess who was there? Who? Missy Hyatt, uh, Bully Ray, Medusa, Blue Meanie, and David Lagressa were at the Madison Square Garden show this past weekend. But guess who also showed up? Who? WCW 2000 Kiss Demon. Oh, oh, crowbar! Yeah. Yeah. Wait, that was crowbar? crowbar? Yeah, yeah, that was crowbar. Was crowbar. Oh, good lord almighty! All right, guys. Well, before we conclude here, let's just talk a little bit about something that we think about already about 2024, whether it's TV rights or a talent showing up here or there, and we'll just have just talk about one for now. I know we'll go into like our longest show come the year's end, the the Wednesday after that time. I hate the world's end, but. Let's just go ahead and talk about that real quick. Uh, what have you brought up, Camille? What have you brought up, Monday Night Raw? What have you brought up, Okada and hmm. WWE? So I'm just gonna let you all shoot the breeze here for a little bit. Eric, why don't you go ahead and spearhead this thing off I me? Mean, you talked about the aspect of Nakamura and Okada. Yeah, how did Nakamura and AJ Styles work out WrestleMania 34 versus Wrestle Kingdom 10? I'm just uh, also AJ Styles has been kind of in limbo, right? Yeah, I think he's still injured. I haven't seen I have him no back idea. yet. I don't know either. He's also at the tail end of his career, but being perfectly But honest. yeah, reportedly a whole bunch of contracts are set to go out. Uh, Okada is never confirmed to be going out, according to Spillers Illustrated. Um, and it, and Japan as a country has been having a yen problem with their currency and economy. So oh Jesus, yeah. So oh. there, that's so. And they brought up how you're going to expect more New Japan talent to start leaving and find other opportunities. Well, I mean, hey, in fact, um, I think one of the descriptions that was mentioned about what's going to happen that they fear New Japan Pro Wrestling is going to turn into a North American Pro Wrestling Theater promotion, oh, where God. basically they make the talent in Japan, and then the North American companies come in and be like, "We'll take them." Well, I mean, they took Will Ospreay, bro. Yeah, and they took Jay bro. White. <laughs> That's my new bro, bro. Bro. And, no, and, and, like I said, it's because New Japan is a par- like Japan itself is having issues with its economy, so there's all that. Wait, there's so also, there... there's also a new president with Bushi Road, also, and I wonder if that might also be impacting anything. So, also, so, um, so no wonder stars are mo- changing jumping yeah, ship and, and everything. Also the possibility yep. Sh- Mercedes Monet could theoretically go back to WWE since her contract's already up. Well, but oh, yeah, speaking but, of that, but, speaking of that. Um, right. I think that Bailey posted something on Instagram. Yeah, she did. That, she did. That, that 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 hints another one. Yeah, I'm gonna rule it out. I, I, I've been saying it for the longest time. Dakota, here, hold on. Here, here's my Casey thing. Here we go. All right. <laughs> let, 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 all right. Uh, let, let, let me tell you something. Dakota Khan, <laughs> true leader of damage control. And she's going to use this to, 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 to not run to the championship. But she's going to take Bailey's spot because that group ain't done jack shit with Bailey as leader. They're a bunch of losers. But she's going to die. She brings Kyrie back, and she's the one with the plan. And she's going to lead damage control to the main event. And after they win it, She's gonna go after and finally claim her first main roster singles championship. And, 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 no, 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 hit me out, fellas. Dakota Kai is gonna be a women's champion in WWE next year by SummerSlam. I, I rest my case. Anyway, that was to you, Casey. Yeah. Shout out to you, brother. Well, I was gonna say, we still miss you and your old Canada. Don't raise that up we, here. We, we still miss you, that bro. 
<laughs> but um, anyway, I was going to mention they New Japan Bushi Road of both Stardom and New Japan had plans to do Gorilla versus Monet, but then all these contracts started coming up. They still uh, hope yes. to have that match happen, but they're not sure depending on how long it takes for Mercedes <sighs> to come back from injury. Well, apparently she's been uh, reconditioning uh, herself and uh, rehabbing. She posted a vignette so. on her Twitter and her Instagram. So yes. I, could, I could definitely, I could definitely see her uh, showing up again prior to Revolution somewhere. It's just a matter of where. And guys, let's Man. be honest. Let's let's be honest here. What's the number one show to first come up in the new year for the most possible surprise possibility? The Royal Rumble. Yeah, we still have Wrestle Kingdom, of course, as well. True, but the Royal Rumble oh, so you hit zero. Here's the exactly. thing. I get the feeling Tony Khan said he would love to have Mercedes in AEW. We we, we kind of already suspected that. Yeah. Right. If Tony Khan wants to prove he that he's the best option for Mercedes, please just goddamn push the women division to the cornerstone it deserves. And by, by please. Saying, you really, wait, 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 wait. You realize wait, Mercedes wait. Monet left due to the way her mentality was towards the women's division. Wait. At the time, if okay, hear me out. Go ahead. If Mercedes signs with AEW, the women's division will be booked better than ever because you already have the future in Mariah May. Yep. You have the champion Tony Storm. Yes. You have a returning Jamie Hater, which I hope God God bless her return would be in a speedy and. Please don't be injured. And you have, you still have Hikaru Shida in the mix. Keep naming them. We're talking about the potential here. Keep naming them. And we have Athena in ROH. Yeah. Well, and uh, we uh, have and we have Minion in training now. Graduated <laughs> Billy Starks. But she didn't graduate. She dropped out and was like, "Screw you! I'm better than this." MIT now she over. Wants to prove it. Now she wants to prove it against Athena and what really is maybe one year in the making because Final Battle is where Athena won the title. And why Eddie Kingston's getting on Athena's case, I think Eddie Kingston's kind of got a point, to be fair. Yep. Anyway, yeah. continue. But, 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 but yeah, like I said, we talk about it all the time. Impact is the leader of women's wrestling. They've been the leader because the Niners has always been the standout, the alternative. A woman's been able to find themselves and be more than just a pretty face or a diva or a blonde bimbo. Or, uh, you know, <laughs> a political figure. I didn't put out no names. What are you talking about? Uh, also, of course, NXT right now. They're really trying to cultivate a lot of great women into the future. Including Jay Cargill. And they still haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. But again, trust the process. Slow burn. Don't just feed her to the wolves. Or to jobbers. Also, and then, of course, uh, like I said, AEW has the potential. But it comes out of the booking. Now they have an established champion in Toy Story with the experience. Excuse me, kind of Toy Story with the experience, and now they have the one of the youngest originals as a champion in Julia Hart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, but I, so, I was also going to mention ahead. this. Um, people keep saying like, "Oh, with Vince McMahon no longer running the creative books, Mercedes can come back then, right? Right?" Yeah. Nah, I mean, yeah, here's, nah. The here's the thing. Here's the thing. People keep bringing that part up, and I was like, like she could, but there's just one tiny problem besides the fact that company gaslit her and Naomi on public television and across the yep. entire green world. That's it. The problem is that the locker room didn't side with her and Naomi. Exactly. Like it probably safe for like own. a handful, like Bailey, but like overall the locker room wasn't on on Sasha and Trinity's side. Well, I mean, you look at Karen Jarrett and Aubrey Edwards, they know they're just there for the ride, but at the end of the day, they're gonna do what's best for the company. They're just going along oh, yeah. with it. There's a reason Speaking why we have that. Um spot. DNA and do you know who was in backstage the picture with Nick Aldis? Uh who? Dixie, Dixie Carter. Dixie Carter, Dixie Carter okay. that's right, Dixie Carter, former TNA president. Well, again, at the end of the day, collaboration should lead to a stronger competition. There should be, like, bad blood, knives, and pitchforks like it was in the 80s and the 90s, all right? But that was when men like were a men. A no, 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 fuck that. It should be pigeonholed like a, a prison, even if WWE is still the most locked-down company in all existence. Anyway. But now they got the global organization because 
WWE is becoming that international juggernaut. They truly are becoming that global juggernaut. I mean, look at the places they visited. Look at where they're going. They're going to France and Berlin next year. And Australia. Yes. Crazy. Yep. But then they fired Chanel Dash. I mean, the, 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 the WWE uh, is going international. That, that's what we need more from them. Go international. with. They plan to bring WrestleMania in the UK, which I highly expect them to do it. I yeah, here's the thing. Um, there's still no word on that. It's going to happen yet. I was like, the only, like, here's the thing. They they the fans want it, no doubt, but Megan would want it. Megan would like, want it. But like WWE's gonna look at the UK and be like, Do you have 90 million dollars in tourism cash? Uh Again. no, we're we're in a cost of living crisis. Piss off. Money yeah, talk. that is true. Money because talk, they want the they day. want to be paid, not just put a show there. That's ridiculous. That'd be giving the fans what we want, what they want. Well, I mean, you know, if they don't get that, they got Taylor Swift. Oh my god. Oh yeah, no. speaking, speaking of Taylor Swift, yeah, apparently All In was affected by that. It's why Tony Khan made the change accommodations to accommodate Taylor as Swift. As much as I hate as much as I fucking hate to say it, Taylor Swift's still bigger than professional wrestling. God bless it. She's the but, one. Um, there's also some sad news for AEW fans in the UK. What? All in will be the only UK based show for them this year next year. This uh, is why well, cancel my plans on the UK. Yeah, so AEW will still have all in there, but they will not have any shows like surrounding. The and area. why? Then oh. why is Jeff wait, wait, wait. being brought there in the first place? Wait, Dude, so there will be no. Markets. So there will be no Dynamite, Rampage, Coliseum. Okay, no, first off, won't. first off, <laughs> stop saying it like that. This is not the you stop it, but you're trying to piss me off. <laughs> Secondly, uh, Jeff Jarrett is, <laughs> Jeff, 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 is there to help them push to further markets. And if you look at the control center that Tony Giovanni does, they have actually debuted in more markets this year. Here's the number one thing I'm going to say right now over spitball and stuff. Stop fucking booking wrestling shows in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, ah! yeah the market has been tapped out. That city is going to burn down to the ground, preferably again. Because the industry is going to kill it. Every about, damn company has booked that show into oblivion. Not just AEW, although they might M- be the most. Impact, WWE. Every company. Golly. How about how about book somewhere like o- Ohio, in the US, Ohio, Puerto Rico, Florida. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind more shows right here in Toledo, Ohio. But it was great to see Collision for the first time ever. Brian Collision. Okay. You stop it! Because <laughs> freaking freaking Brian Dennis and Christian Cage and Chris Statler and Sky Blue. By the way, Sky Blue. Damn girl, way to own what you freaking know you're famous for. Jesus. Mm. Oof. She yeah, said it and uh, she, she said it and she showed it. All oh, right. Yes, then. yeah, she did. Uh, woo, Saturday. Whoa, that's uh... hey, hey, Saturday's all right. And more wait, wait. One. Speaking of okay, um one more time. Collison. <laughs> Kenny Omega versus Ethan Page. <laughs> Jesus the Christ. Bet, the, bet, the, the, bet, the battle of the Canadians. All the Canadian Canadians, all this Canadian talk, and I just got done covering Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, wow, Noah, you're fucking tired. But Wrestle King, WrestleMania 7, with, not, not 7, also double botch. Fuck me! <laughs> WrestleMania 6 with JJ. That took place Welcome in to Botchamania. Shut up. <laughs> WrestleMania 6 with JJ. That took place in Canada in the Sky Dome with the freaking Oogle guy singing the Canadian National Anthem. Three more WrestleManias to go, and you're oh. going to be doing the one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. Don't remind me. <laughs> Fuck my life sometimes on this shit. Uh, the... They need they need to like do more f- from King's um state, Oklahoma and Texas, a lot. You for got AEW. enough madness already in Texas with Garland, Winners Coming, and Final Battle. He's got enough going on right now in Texas. Texas is almost I'm... getting oversaturated. The Wild right? Wild West. The I wild, just remember something. I just remember something. Guess, guess what was coming soon to the Ring of Honor? Well, Ring of Honor, why? The United Empire is now gunning out to the at the Mongol Embassy. 
the, uh, the, the, the trios oh uh, uh, oh wait which which rendition of united empire uh, Khan and Henair. oh hell yeah that makes sense that was that makes that a lot deal. of sense and Jeff Cobb is a former Ring of Honor champion, so he's no stranger to holding gold from this promotion. No, he's not. Right. JPW, uh, Worlds Collide, former specials with Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling exclusively. But uh, I digress. Yeah, Camille, I- I- in my opinion, if AEW doesn't get the women's division together, I could see her going to WWE. She's got Imagine the build, she just goes but- to Impact. That's the best place for women. Yeah, I, I, I agree, but the, the strength of Impact is they do more with less and create more from what they have. There's a reason why Conan King, Tasha Steele, Diana Perrazzo, Trinity, Shelja, Killer Kelly. Killer Ke- Killer Kelly. Masha Jordan Slamovich. <laughs> Red, red, red all day. That's all I got to say about that. Oh, um, Isn't the Alfrazo's contract coming up next year? Yes, we do. I'm worried. I got to be honest here. Look, I- I'm just going to say this for the record. She is one of the most proficient wrestlers, technically. Not named Serena Deeb in women's wrestling. Somebody doesn't focus on that shit. Not, also, not um, we, also, with all these contract talks, let's just mention this. Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch. There are contracts also coming up next year. But isn't TKO also, trying- AJ Styles, apparently. I think TKO is trying to like extend their like contracts with big money. Yeah. That's it. Money talks. And right? I was like, so are you going to give Drew McIntyre what he's been asking for? Uh, yeah, right. that's, he's a, that's a question mark. He's the only question mark. Sheamus is a question mark on creative. But, yeah, but but Claudio uh, said he wants Sheamus to be, and even Claudio said he wants Sheamus to come in and yeah, join AEW. Right. The bar, yeah, but now the bar in AEW, mm. or Sheamus be part of Blackpool Combat Club? That would be cool. Uh, also, uh, uh, here here's here's what um, I, I recall hearing this. Apparently, there was. Okay, um, hold on. Let me see if I can find this. But uh, and other news, Raw still is up in the air, and we've already talked about Amazon. But FX was also another candidate, and that is strictly a movie. Oh yeah, speaking of AEW, um, the the recent episode of Unrestricted is Chris Hero. Oh no. <sighs> oh no. Oh no. Yeah, you knew what I was talking about there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Also. Uh, also, he gave out. Also, um, speaking of Chris Hero, he said he has conditions if he tries to return to wrestle. I don't know what those were, but like that's what apparently is going on. Well, that just tells me that the kings of pro wrestling are not coming back anytime soon. And honestly, they don't need to, even if, even if Kyle, Kyle Casnoli's in limbo right now. The kind of right. classic has breathed some life into some of these people that you don't know which way they're going at the expense right now of particularly Mark Briscoe and Jay Leaf, we're being perfectly honest, and Daniel Garcia, who the most inexperienced in this. And accoladed, under accoladed, he still right now has the biggest chance to hang with the absolute best and show out. So, in which Diego Garcia has came out and said this is his contract year. So wherever oh. he goes, yep. And, and and honestly, he's been one of the longest running stories of character development in being a sports Athena or a professional wrestler. Damn the woo! So it, it's one of those things where it's like. I, I don't know if that's I, – I, I do think Derek Garcia and Ricka Stocks could realistically go over to the WWE. I actually do. Yeah. I'm starting to prepare for that right now. we, we, we got to be honest here, guys. There's a reason why we are ATW. We are unbiased. We are not shills. We are not tribalists. We are optimistic analysts and viewers of all aspects of the industry. A lot of people can really jump ship from AEW to the WWE. In the name of money. And we just saw Ricky Starks in the ring with Jay Cargill, for example. Ricky Starks yeah. gotta be the next big name candidate right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I I can't be sure if I if I recall this correctly, but I did keep hearing that before Drew McIntyre had re-signed with WWE, New Japan was making a strong offer. And guess what they initially were gonna offer him? What? You're gonna fight Okada. Oh wow! Remember what happened to the last person that fought Okada um, earlier this year, or last year? Yeah, he came. He went back. Yeah. 
Uh, Wait, again, who, who are we referring to again? Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed. Thank you. Oh, they no. Know. The, the man who beat Okada. And now he's doing insert thing here. At the end of the day, uh, nice. money and family. Those are the two biggest factors for anybody in this industry. You want the most money? You go to the WWE. You want to secure your family for life? You go to the WWE. Here's the you thing. want to spend more time with your family? You don't go to the WWE. Here's the thing. WWE firings are weird. They fire people and then they rehire back. It's some weird thing. Well, it's not the whole budget cut thing, but also we need more bodies because we haven't built enough bodies yet. Like Drew McIntyre said, like Drew McIntyre NWA said to do cuts. Well, uh, yeah, again, they're, they're losing, in my opinion, their, their biggest star that's holding them up, and that was Camille. And that's that was another reason I was following the NWA still, if I'm being perfectly honest. I'm, 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 very, curious, I'm very curious to see what happens, particularly with Camille. Deanna Perrazzo, Rika Stocks, Dan Garcia, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Kasuchiko Okada, and Tetsuya Naito. Those are the people I'm watching right now out for in 2024 as far as their futures goes. Because as far as I'm concerned, MDF is AEW. I think that whole bidding war thing is just a work. Apparently, he has resigned. A rumor has it he has resigned for 2027. <laughs> See, I've been saying it to my I've been saying it myself for about a few months now. He has quietly resigned ever since that, you know, all out return last year. He quietly remember, resigned. Remember when he cried on the media scrum recently? Yep, that showed right there. If you need more further more further proof. Or 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 again, guys, this guy has a degree in theater. He was acting. That you guys man are could... really easy to get worse. No, no. That man could could not break his character wherever he goes. Nope. And yet he's uh, actually. Uh, also, uh, guess what Nia Jax did on uh, uh, oh, no. right before TV? She's oh, not no. like most girls. No, the, the, the uh, former half of the Samoan Steakhouse. <laughs> uh, Nia Jax <laughs> said that she said she credits Shayna Baszler with sending Ronda Rousey to a company lesser than WWE. And this is the exact reason why we cannot move forward in the right way in this industry with dumb shit said like that. Oh, by the way, Nia Jax is going to feud with Becky Lynch. The end. Oh, so they're finally going to... Oh. Well, there's our match for Royal Rumble. Uh, anyway, uh, also, Ronda Rousey and Ring of Honor. Did not see that. My I did not see that coming at all. No, that's freaking crazy. Let's be, let's be realistic here. If they go back to California, do they get Ronda Rousey again? And this time, do they get her for AEW? Well, apparently, uh, AEW and her had tension during the negotiations for Ring of Honor. Gee, yeah. tension. Ronda Rousey. That doesn't sound abnormal, right? Also, if Mercedes was the sign of AEW, I would think, it, it, since she says she's clear, Serena D would be her perfect introduction feud. Mm. Well, yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm I'm just curious how they reintroduce Serena Deep into the ecosystem because she is one of the most honest to God. Besides Amy Sakura, she's the person you need right now, coaching and leading this division into the future. I said what I said. Oh, also, after the Bell podcast is canceled. Oh, damn! How that happened? Mm. Wait, which, which podcast? After, after the, the Bell, Bell with Corey, Corey Graves and yeah, Corey Graves and Vic Joseph. Wow. Yeah, they canceled it last month. Oh, it must have ran out. It just got confirmed yeah. recently. Wait, uh, what's I mean, the what's the other thing? It, not a podcast, another show for WWE with out of WWE. character, out of out, out of character. That right, one right, got right. yeah, that one's gone too. Oh man, I mean, I mean, I guess they got too much content, so they had to like filter out some stuff. The podcast is where they start because you know you gotta get more time for the bump. I don't know. I mean, that's how you see. That's I me. Mean, that's why you see Ryan Satin doesn't work for the WWE is not being a WWE shield like that no more on Twitter. Well, I, again, I'm not on the Twitter because I. Oh, I'm also, Kevin Sullivan, one of the old guard of AEW's founding production vice president, has been let go. Yeah, I read about that. That's an interesting. Relief. Some people feel like it might have been best because he's been screwing up a lot with the camera work. Yeah, that, Ooh, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, it's fair. I mean, how long of delays have we had? Did anyone remember when Morlo was looking at a TV backstage at Collision? Not plugged mm. in. Yep. I'm just saying. 
And then Lexi Nairs just waiting for her. And to yet do. they still won't fire Kevin Kevin Dunn off of WWE. <laughs> Wait. Oh yeah, and that, I think another one that left WWE is Mackenzie Mitchell. Yes. Yeah, she was let go actually, which uh, I she confirmed like, on her Instagram. Yeah, but it, it seems like it was mutual. So at the end of the day, you you, you cut the budget where you can. It, it, this is just a weird industry when it comes to you know. But also, it's one of those things where it's like if you're not you know a focal point of the product, you're expendable. Doesn't matter it's where business. you are. That's, this is that, business. That, yeah. It's literally business. Guys, I spent three hours talking with somebody in the business on the independent side of things for 16 years. Shout out to Mr. I Told You So, the, uh, the Gino, and uh, it was great to have him on up on my night. Go check that out if you can, guys. And he talked a lot about, uh, you know, those aspects uh, of the business. When it comes to that locker room uh, etiquette, when it comes to the two big companies and how things move around, he's worked uh, multiple angles with uh, WWE as far as, like, you know, a stand-in with the staff and the security. He's also, of course, worked on uh, dark matches in AEW's uh, past. So it, it's one of those things. Also, he's a huge fan, primarily of Lucha Libre. So it's one of those things where, again, we really don't know the inside of the industry, but he definitely gave a lot to light in our discussion. And at the end of the day, like, she hit the nail on the head. No matter what we think, we are just fans. We kind of have to really try, and even I'm guilty of this, and I'm trying to do better. So that's got to try to figure it like as fans and really figure about as business because at the end of the day, that's what trans nothing else. That's why CM Punk's back in WWE. Yeah, despite the rest of that. Oh, yeah. Speaking of um, AW and everything, Chris Jericho appeared in Vietnam. What, which, yeah, Chris Jericho appeared. Chris Jericho was in Vietnam because he scouted There's talent. Something- from Apparently. Vietnam pro from Vietnam pro wrestling, yeah. See, he's got more talent. I mean, because um yeah. also um along with him was a former AEW dark compare Viva Van. I remember Viva Van. Great Damn. Yeah, because she's part Vietnamese and she was the one who helped um the promotion Vietnam pro wrestling when it comes to the wrestling ring. Oh, nice. I respect that. Because uh, um because the. the that happened during, I think, Sunday in Asia time that he appeared in in Vietnam. So like, which yeah. I was yeah, like, I was about to say, <laughs> go go ahead, King. <laughs> I, was, I said, which is why I was like, why was Chris Jericho in Vietnam? And then, then someone told me, I said, ah, he's scouting talent. Okay. So they get, they're reaching out globally. You got it. You got. That, that, that they don't have like a, an NXT, but if people calling up on her, that they get everybody in a different direction. Uh, who knows? But uh, I mean, it's from what I remember, um, Jericho's a VP of talent relations, I think. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, yeah. So that's why he's like, he's like Triple H, but you know, scouting. I would say it's almost more like QT Marshall because the head of talent relations is still because for Daniel. Oh, also, did you all see Triple H take a shot at? That QT more or less, and the training that Jay Cargill went through. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, guess what came out after QT announced he was leaving? What? We should totally hire QT, right, Triple H? At the end of the day, you know what? You put your foot. And I was just like, you you just publicly put him on blast indirectly, along with Brian, because of Jay Cargill's training, and now you want to hire him. Ladies speaking and gentlemen, speaking let, of QT Marshall, let's not forget he was in NXT at one time. He was. He was. And he, he could definitely be a coach, just like Lindsay Dorado was a, a coach, I believe. I don't know if he's still a coach he, right he, now. He, there. He, I think he's still a coach in the performance center. That's why I thought. At the end of the day, hypocrisy, ladies and gentlemen, hypocrisy is not only done by Tony Khan. Even Triple H does it. Thank you. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyway. Enough, enough, enough gimmicks. Ah, that gummit. You could have Chad Gable though, getting that over. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm really just wondering what the industry is going to look like by the end of 2024, if nothing else. And again, Tony Khan, get your fucking service set up for the pay per views, please. Oh, please, please, bro. I've Please. never had an episode in my wallet in my life. I spent four hundred dollars on professional wrestling pay per views in eight. You're not the only one. I have two. And then you consider one hundred and fifty for the three Rev Honor pay per views, 
and then you consider the freaking 200 for the impact pay-per-view. Someone else oh, do the math for me. Anyway. But, yeah. Either way, guys, there's still a lot left to be figured out for December. Again, we got... God bless them, men and women. We got tribute to the troops. We got dit, 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 deadline. And we'll see. I still think deadline should be a final exam for people in NXT, but that's just a whole different conversation for another day. Fine real competition for uh, Lyra Valkyria and uh, Uvia Bulaganov, not named Baron Corbin. Uh, just saying. Uh, we got friggin' final resolution. What a fitting name, by the way. Impact's last show before they rename themselves back to TNA. Final resolution. And when you look at this card, kind of like an homage. It's not really like any favorite that's on the line. It's more like momentum or hype. I mean, the biggest match on the card, you got the Marcy Machine Guns versus Zack Sabre Jr. and Josh Alexander. What? Just saying. This would be a good card, though. And then, oh, yeah. Sp uh, speaking of independence, Mike Bailey has been on fire in the independence. I mean, when is he not? I, I, at this point, who had more matches this year? Because I know it's got to be a competition with these two. Was it Speedball Mike Bailey or Macha Slamovic? Also, the fact that Mike Bailey versus Maki Ito happened. God. Oh, yeah, that did happen. Yeah. A man of integrity should not be messing with that crazy motherfucker. Whoa. We don't, we don't do that. Casey's not here. We don't do that. Non copyright. Also, and Randy Orr said you appear on Logan Paul's podcast. Oh, I'm sure that's good. I'm sure he won't RKO him, although I would love to see that. That's going to be a good hard. conversation. I mean, there, there was a clip of Randy Orton stealing the U.S. title that Logan Paul left in the room. I don't think Logan Paul would care. He tried to pawn it for Pete's sake. That's the value I mean, the okay, for not safe for work broadcast, he slept with his fiance with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Melo and Simi Gabrari beat him to that. And apparently Darius <laughs> told him not to do that, and he just did it anyways. Logan Paul, do you really think they're gonna hold him back versus CM Punk? Not, oh, not gonna sorry. lie. Regardless of we hate Logan Paul, we can never deny his dedication and pure athleticism for the nope. sport. You're absolutely right. I, I mean, I've even said that. Like I said, you gotta think about this place as a business, not a fan. Logan Paul checks off all the boxes when it comes to in the ring, especially Sam and Rey Mysterio's next. Except his part-time status. Well, yeah. that's a, that's just unfortunately the nature of the beast when you could have that big of a wallet and that big of an ego to support that high river reigns anyway and um, one more thing go ahead brock fierce Kyrie. really if we're going to talk about that game okay, we're going to talk about that meme we're going to talk about that meme right there the closest thing we're going to talk about that all right <laughs> brock fierce Kyrie. uh, uh Ooh. all i know all i know is if they aren't going the direction that I think they're going, then I'm confused. If you tell me that Kyrie and Oscar are not going to want to become women's tag team champions, now that Piper Niven and Chelsea wow. have no competition, and EO Sky is the smack that women's champion, Dakota Kai's leading the faction, and you're telling me that these three aren't going to have all the gold with Dakota Kai's leading the Triple Tails, Triple out. Tails. Or, uh, I, or, or, or um, don't let Bianca get frustrated so easily after what I saw on Friday between her and Kyrie. Just saying. Uh, Oh, yeah. Well, you know. People still think Bianca should go heel, but as far as that goes, nah, that ain't going to happen with what she does for little girls. She's a figurehead now. She's a baby face. So, but her and Charlotte, the Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch coexisting, I did not expect that. I did not expect them to make up. See the past is behind us, that people can move on, that people can grow, that people can work Charlotte. together. Move forward, you know? Focus on what's important here. Gotta make money, gotta make money, gotta make money. That's what it should be all about at the end of the day. Make money for your company, make money for yourself. Booker T was right about one thing. Checks and championships really do define the business. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Even if I yep. can't stand in my commentary. They're just meat. The only meat is the meat division. Oh, my God. Speaking, <laughs> oh, yeah. I said this before, but people are going to be, oh, man. What, what? if? What if the devil was... It was me, Max. It was me all Tony along. Tony Khan. Okay. All right. Tony oh, Khan. No. Hear, hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Oh, no. Tony Khan needs to completely stay off screen. Tony Khan <laughs> needs to lay off the cocaine. No bread. No water. Just me. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> 
Well, we know what this guy does outside. Wait, 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 wait. TK versus Max. Book it, TK. Oh, wait, you're fighting already. <laughs> <laughs> Can we please not try and turn Tony Khan to another versus Man character? No, what is this? Durag Vince era? Oh, God, oh. that's it. That's it. That's it. We're done. We're, we're done with tonight. That, that, that's the final straw. I ain't going down that road again. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait speak, 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 merger I mean, speaking of doing events, I mean, Matt Cardona did it on GCW. All I'm going to say is white man don't act black. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Darren, go ahead. <laughs> huh? But you, you, had, you had something you were about to say or something No, like I that. said Vince at the big announcement for the merger, he wore do rag. <laughs> Because a fedora doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, now, if he wore a fedora, then I would be convinced he's secretly a mafia ready to stab me with his knife. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I will offer you some, something you can't refuse. Uh, the, the Tony D'Angelo family is probably the reason. No, no, no. Why... He, he'll, he'll, he'll look at Air, a male a straight in the eye, his, his friend, and say, You broke my heart, Eddie. You broke my heart. <laughs> Over the fact that he's no longer the creative head of WWE. No glove in his hand, just laying out on his couch, just going, damn it. And it drops. And mm-hmm. scene. What the fuck's happening here? Oh, uh, yeah. Speaking, uh, of, speaking more of a version of The Godfather. Speaking of McMahon's, have you noticed that um, Vince's grandson, Shane's son, uh, oh, wait. Is it Shane's son, right? Yes. King finally crashed. Ah, ah. Wait, is Shane's son? Yeah, the, the football one. Yeah, that ah. looks like similar to Vince McMahon. Oh, Declan. Yes. Ah. They said there's a possibility that the son of Shane would would want to step into WWE as like a business savvy person or something. Well, as long as he's not stepping inside the ring after what happened at WrestleMania 39. Learn from example. Here comes the mud. Oh. <laughs> Here comes the oh. <laughs> I tore myself worse than Vince tore his quad walking down to the Royal Rumble. Uh, oh wait, he tore he tore his worse than Vince's squad and Kevin Nash's squad. Oh god. And worse than Sid Justice WCW injury. Oh, okay. We don't talk about that. No, no, no. I, I, I... We, don't, we don't talk about that. That's almost a, that, that our, about uh, that. Look, guys, we got to wrap this up. It's already past two in the morning. Oh, yeah, it is. I went to a freaking spit farming oblivion when I was just talking about contract. <laughs> Bottom line, folks, stay with us for December. Stay tuned for the year's end. We'll see what we approve, what we deny, what we hope for, and everything else all side. Thank you for tuning in once again to the ATW View. On behalf of Lex, King, Eric, on behalf of those that are not here but always love, Cindy, JD, Casey Flynn, why are you freaking swerving? And the entire ATW crew, we are ATW. We swerve and we drive. We swerve and we say, make a positive impact in life. Goodbye and good freaking night. Family, get off this freaking set. Bang. Hey, Ali. Hey, Ali. Coliseon, Rampage, Dana Mate. You freaking motherfucker! You're happy to get out of You're currently blowing up alone! You ain't part of any dumb! Uh, Killer Kelly. Red, 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 red. I'm gonna get off this case. Let her do her own thing. And no, I'm not part of her only fans, okay? And what is Scissor going me, on? yay, Alley. You first driven community. You freaking millennial full of shit. Ah, uh, Killer Kelly. Oh, red. Red everything. Yes, red. Red. Just contact your woman of your own. Get out and get some dead stuff on it. Damn it. Thank you for tuning in.